All right, uh, as we have a quorum, thank you, Jennifer, for starting the recording. Um, welcome to the uh, Wednesday, November 10th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly of the Town of Amherst. We are beginning at 5.32, um, and I will read the uh, traditional statement um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. Um, see instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, we have a <clears throat> we have a fairly compact and focused agenda tonight, <laughs> which I hope will uh, facilitate, you know, really focused discussion and uh, some decision making, which is exciting. Um, Michelle, did you have anything, any, are there any announcements from you or from Jennifer? Uh, no announcements. Just checking to see, I was just checking in to see. Jennifer, have you heard from Dr. Shabazz or Yvonne? I know Alexis is gonna be a little late. I have not. Okay, okay. Um, I didn't, I did not know if you guys, I can send an email if you would like, we can wait a few more minutes and then I can send an email if they don't appear. Um, if you wanted to do the roll call attendance for now. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, Michelle. <laughs> here. <laughs> Irv. <laughs> here. Hala. Lord present. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I love <laughs> that, by the way, Heather. When you say that, I every time I love. <laughs> love when, thank you. I hadn't heard it before you showed that to me. <laughs> okay. Everyone looks better than me. <laughs> I was very underlit, so. <laughs> I'm just making comment here. <laughs> uh, I have lipstick on because I'm like have a little birthday party for my daughter happening after this. So I'm a little more fancy than I might normally be. But uh, all right. So I think we can probably move to public comment. Jen, do you know if there's nobody here in the attendees, do we still read the disclosure? Okay. Well, I don't know about reading the disclosure because again, not all of the committees necessarily do that, but you do have to make the announcement that public comment is that we're during the public comment period. Period. Okay, great. Um, so yes, we are um, now in the public comment period. And so if there is anybody who would like to make public comment, please let us know by raising your hand and we will call on you. And there is nobody in the attendees, so I think we're safe to move on. <laughs> and I know um, that both Pat and Alyssa were on, are unable to, to meet with us tonight, so they won't be coming. So before we get started, I, <clears throat> um, Dr. Jemison, I just wanted to briefly say that um, we had Monday a presentation at the town council and we're very grateful for the attendance of most council members uh, were able to make it and even um, Alexis was there as Amherst Media but was able to actually listen in so that was great. Um, and we want to say that we are going to designate a small period of time in our next meeting to um, sort of just unpack that presentation a bit and have the opportunity to talk about um, the presentation and counselor comments. So I'm sorry that we're sorry that that's not happening in today's meeting, but maybe because we don't have as many people here, that's a good thing anyway. So we'll have the opportunity first thing in our next meeting to do that. All right, and I'll pass it over to you, Dr. Jemison. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and screen share. This is the packet. Um, I hope you all got to review beforehand. Um, Michelle, did you want to, well, actually, I'll talk for a minute more, and then I was hoping, Michelle, that you'd uh, orient us a little bit around the core elements of reparations. So 
we called this meeting to have a very focused meeting um, so that we, uh, Michelle and I would go uh, forth with the appropriate requests that the assembly had agreed to for the budget form for next Monday. So that is our focus. Um, and so what uh, we did and what we contain put here in the packet are two things. One is uh, this document about the core elements of reparation and reparations, pardon me. And then the other one was a uh, look at funding sources, um, some suggestions about exactly sort of how much money we would like to uh, request from each of them for how long and how much um, and for what. Uh, it is in tabular view here. There is a little bit more detail um, in this sort of uh, outline structure below. So our intention is to discuss, uh, basically put a motion on the floor, discuss each of, each of these uh, pools of money and, and if we're requesting the right amounts for them, and then um, move that to a vote so that uh, Michelle and I can go forward with the, with the right, asking for the right things on Monday. So, um, however, for context, I thought that this, uh, this core elements of reparations document was great and I appreciate you bringing this forward, Michelle. I was wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about it to, um, contextualize uh, the, the next few things we're gonna do. Absolutely, yes. And I should have brought the book down with me, but um, this comes from a book by Cam Howard, who is the male co-chair of the National NCOBRA. Um, and it's called Laying the Foundation of Local Reparations. It's an excellent little book that I recommend anybody um, pick up. You, I think you can buy it on off of Amazon. I'm happy to lend mine to anybody who's interested in looking at it. Um, I believe that Cam took most of this information from Public International Law and Policy Group, and that's another organization that you can look at. They've based these um, reparations these types of reparations they've based off of a sort of international law of reparations. And so uh, you can see here, they start, it starts here with, um, I, and I never can say this word right. Is it cessation, cessation? Okay. <laughs> Assurances and guarantees of non-repetition, restitution and repatriation, compensation, satisfaction and rehabilitation. And, um, each of these types has, you know, you can it, hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at them. Um, and what we've done here is to show uh, with each of the types what Evanston and Chicago has done. And then I we made a tab for Amherst as well. So we can start to sort of think about as um, this committee moves into really understanding the types of reparations that it's recommending, we can look at them uh, in this framework, which I think is really helpful. And we can also look at our funding options within this framework as well, so that we understand um, whether or not a funding, like for example, CPA um, may not hit all of these reparation types because it's more project-based, whereas like the cannabis money will be able to touch all of them. So that's sort of a basic layout. If anyone has any questions on that, um, this would be a great time to ask. And Dr. Awesome. if you wanted to add, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, nothing to add at this moment. I just wanted to uh, say that we've welcomed Yvonne. Um, and Yvonne, can you uh, respond here that you're present? Present. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it's, hard to, it's hard to see when you're sharing the screen. I only see you. I don't see anybody else. So that's, maybe it's That's my... too bad. <laughs> <laughs> there, now I see you. There we go. Okay. Actually, I don't know if that's good or bad. But anyway, uh, question on is, is, are we going to be using this as a kind of rubric in relationship to how we build um, or present our our proposals to the town in terms of, um, of how they meet various categories of this rubric? Again, are we going to use this as a rubric? 
I think that's a great question, Herb, and I would like to just ask you a clarifying question. Are you asking if we're going to use this on Monday or if when we're further down the road and we're starting to decide on types of reparations for Amherst, are we going to use this? All right. So the first question, what do you mean on Monday? Yeah, so we're still sort of figuring out what that's going to look like. And I have a call in to Alyssa to figure out what our best way forward is. So as you heard at the on the uh, on Monday at the presentation, um, we committees, town committees, and you know this probably better than anyone, town committees do not like have some sort of special presentation that they can give during the budget forum. So we're sort of lumped in with anyone else that shows up and has three minutes to speak. However, I believe that we're able to, um, and Lynn did, um, did say this during the presentation that we can put whatever we agree on tonight we can put in writing and submit it to the town council and town manager. And I think that we should absolutely do that. Whatever it is that we vote on tonight and that may or may not include this rubric, um, we'll submit in writing formally to the town manager and town council. All right, so you answered one question, which is in, in relationship to uh, what's upcoming on Monday in terms of the budget forms and presenta presentations thereof. Um, the other question then comes back to, um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you and Dr. Jemison will be making a presentation or comments at that, at that budget forum, forum, is that correct? Yes. And the second follow-up to that is, uh, if you're going to be making those, what are, what are you going to be presenting and representing? in terms of this group? We'll be representing exactly what we vote on tonight. All right, that backs up to the last, the next question, which was former question. Does this rubric determine what we uh, vote on in relationship to, to tonight? The rubric um, with the various funding streams is really just, a, it's a proposal that Dr. Jemison and I are putting forward to the AHRA based on all the information we've taken in from members and from what we've learned over the past eight weeks. It's absolutely up for discussion um, and that's what we'll be doing now. So Dr. Jemison prepared some motions, one for each of the funding sources. So one for cannabis, one for um, ARPA, one for free cash. And so we'll go through each of them now and we'll have a chance to discuss, make changes, and then we'll vote on each of them individually. So it's not like you have to vote on the full package or nothing. Another question is, were these motions that, getting, that are getting ready to be made uh, presented to uh, via the packet beforehand? No, they were not. And uh, we sort of just um, realized like at the final hour after having put this in the packet that we should probably come prepared with motions as opposed to trying to create language on the fly. Um, so we've prepared motions, but we can certainly take, there's certainly an option not to use these motions. It's just to sort of help move us along. It's, I, I really appreciate you and Dr. Jemison's uh, you know, wanting to um, be uh, efficient, but please in the future, if you're gonna present something for a motion, information around those emotions and that you're gonna have a motion should be presented beforehand so that all of us could have uh, an opportunity to think about it, contemplate it, et cetera, and then be able to make an informed decision. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, thank you for, you know, we're sort of just learning the, the process here ourselves. And um, just to be clear, the motions have nothing to do with anything other than this information that was presented in the packet. So um, they're directly in relation. And I don't know, Dr. Jemison, if you want to add to this, but uh, we could certainly create our motions here now if that's something that the group would like to do. <laughs> so that's up to the group. How? 
I appreciate that you've made motions ahead of time. Um, this happens in school committees sometimes and it's just, I don't think I would need to see it ahead of time because it's just practicing the language of making motions that I move this. I think all that we need to know is we're gonna separate these funding sources into different motions, but I don't have to see your motion that we're practicing the language ahead of time. Thanks, that's just my opinion. Thank you. Yvonne? Um, I'd like to know um, what the, the what the ultimate goal is for this particular meeting. I thought it was funding or talking through these fundraising issues. Um, I, again, would like to uh, reiterate how much I appreciate you putting this together. I honestly think that this um, table that you created is a wonderful rubric for us to start doing the work that we need to do. You know what I'm saying? Like like last last meeting i was like well what's the work that of this committee what are we doing and this this table shows every you know um category that we could spend time looking at and talking about maybe not all of them are applicable to amherst but it's i think it's a good start um i think it's something that we can't really go into tonight um i think it's a good way to look and see especially what evanston has done and whether that some of those things can carry over into what we're putting together for our specific community you know so i'm i'm loving that but as far as voting on specific i would like us to i mean it's up to i don't know what the what the chairs have in mind for the agenda but are we going to go through each funding stream individually so we can each get some information about these motions before we vote on them because that's that's kind of like what i would like Yes, that is our plan indeed. So um, the first portion there with the types of reparations is more of an, an addendum. It's more of a sort of just an extra document to help us sort of frame. But the, the meat of tonight's meeting is to go through each of these funding sources um, and if possible, vote on what we would like to ask the town for for each of these. And I get can't. the part get the party started let's get it started <laughs> ready i got dinner on the stove downstairs let's go <laughs> so um michelle i think there was one other did you have any we talked about um if there would be a discussion of the stabilization fund itself and its structure yes and i don't have um solid answers i want to ask her this actually Irv, um, and anybody who might know the answer to this, but I know that Irv and I have had this conversation and he was also present, um, as was Hala, um, when we did this kind of, when we, when this stabilization fund was created in the spring. So it's my understanding that the stabilization fund works like an endowment and that the money that can be used toward reparation activities is the interest, not the principal. And so, for example, off of the 210 of this for this year, we were looking at like $8,000 being able to actually be able to get used. And so, Dr. Jemison wasn't when we talked about this she was sort of i think surprised to find out that um the the interest was the only monies that we were able to pull from um and that we would accrue this and hopefully get it into the millions so that the amount of interest would increase um, but that the two-third votes to pull money out is really only in relation to the interest and if that is all true, does this committee find that to be, um, I don't wanna say problematic, but potentially problematic without another type of fund that uh, where the, the principle could be used? And Yvonne, yeah. Um, I'm wondering why, I mean, I'm new to the committee, so you'll give me the history of why we were assigned the stabilization fund instead of a regular account that we could draw on i just think that's um too limiting for what we want to get done 
Yeah, my understanding of it is we uh, when when we asked the town last spring to create a committee and a fund, the town felt strongly that they couldn't create a committee without without having a fund immediately created. And so the solution at that time was to create a stabilization fund, which they knew would sort of circumvent, I think some of the legal uh, questions that were still being answered. And so my feeling is that this is the, this is the situation right now, but it's perfectly viable that the, committee would want to make a recommendation that a different sort of fund be the long the long view game here um so and if anyone else has further information, please well, yeah i have a follow-up to that which is we're talking about transferring monies into that account so is the conversation also about us changing the nature of that account before money gets transferred in there because then we don't know how we'll get the money out of can that we, account can we be, before we go there let's can we come back and i have my hand up thank to, you or, i can't see everybody i'm so sorry for, All right, for, for, for the original question that you asked uh michelle mm -hmm. um and as everyone well maybe everyone doesn't know uh, when this first was uh, broached uh, by Sean in a council meeting, uh, it was to put money into a stabilization fund. But when we go back and look at that whole meeting, it was just to put money into the stabilization fund. There was talk about $200,000, et cetera. And what I'm getting at is everything is virgin territory to go forward with in terms of the stabilization fund in terms of the, the discussions that are going to be coming up in terms of moving that money to the stabilization fund by the council. In other words, we don't have to have a quarter of that coming out, uh, you know, 20, uh, I mean, a quarter of a percent or, or 1% or 5% or 10%. We can determine, how, uh, determine that, hey, upon request by the AHRA or its uh, it's a, a successor that amounts of money can be withdrawn from that. The the idea was to was to grow it uh, as a um, as 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 sort of like an endowment, but that was just an idea. And and I guess the bottom line here is what I'm trying to say, and I'm not being clear, is that our future in terms of this is in our hands. We need to get back to the council and uh, especially to uh, and Andy Steinberg uh, and um, Lynn to say, here is how we would like this to be read in terms of stabilization fund, because the stabilization fund is the stabilization fund. There is the law does not say that you only can take a quarter percent off uh, out of it or any percent out. It says that it's stabilization fund can only be a certain percent of the total budget of the town. That's it. So it's in our hands. Thank you. That's really helpful. Yeah, Jennifer. So I'm not aware of all the different ways that money can be held in local government but i know that typically most accounts that have money anything that's not used goes into a general fund and we would not want the money for ahra to do that for reparations to do that oh that's so that's that's right that was another reason for this you're exact that's right yep wait, wait a minute jennifer i'm not understanding what you're saying usually when any money that is appropriated to any town organization agency or cetera that is not expended by the by the end of the fiscal year goes back into the general fund and that that's, is correct yeah that's what i just said yep yeah but it, that does not that does not relate to money that's unexpended from the um, stabilization fund right i just thought that the question was why are we in a stabilization fund as opposed to another fund and that's oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was part yeah. of the reason. 
Yeah, I, I just wanted to clarify because I didn't want people yep. to confuse the two things. No. It's always different with local government. Right? <laughs> so does that clarify people's questions for right now on the stabilization fund? Okay. Let's see, just make sure. And welcome to Alexis. <laughs> Thank can, you. Can we get some clarity, um, maybe a follow-up on um, how we, that indeed we can decide on withdrawals from the stabilization fund? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I actually was, I think Dr. Jemison and I were hoping to either have Sean come to a future meeting or somehow give us some clarification. Um, we did we did find out, Yvonne, on Monday that the $210,000 is not being voted on until November 22nd. Um, what I also found out, because I'm um, signed up for all of these various meetings that are happening, they come onto my text. There is a forum that day, a public forum that is specific to free cash. And it includes the money that is being moved into our stabilization fund. So that's nothing to be alarmed or concerned about, but just to know that there could be public input on that day. So if it's a meeting, you may um, be interested in and attending. attending. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. Exactly. Thank you. Hella, did you have your hand raised? Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, okay, so I think Dr. Jemison, we can start going through this if, if that works for you. All right. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about this table and then we can hopefully get the voting rolling. So these first two items, free cash and cannabis, um, what we will be asking you is, is if folks would like to sort of request those annually. And uh, we know that this year uh, we're getting $210,000. That's sort of what's already been decided. That is about 7.5% of the free cash that was certified according to the document that's on uh, the, the council's website. Um, so we were going to sort of <laughs> be ambitious and ask for 20% uh, annually. Um, and then for cannabis, uh, and the idea is that 20% annually would go into the stabilization fund. And the reason we're trying to do that is because we are looking for a source of funds that can grow to a large size for future use. Um, same with the cannabis. Uh, we thought we would try to use it in the same way. Um, one of the things we thought uh, might be uh, increase actually our chances of getting it is to show that we uh, understand that there are other priorities as well. Um, and so maybe to go a third, a third, a third uh, with community safety, with climate and with reparations. So ask for that annually, again, to go into the stabilization fund. Um, <clears throat> and then the other, the other funds, ARPA and the Community Preservation Act funding, um, these tend to be more project-based. So uh, these are not necessarily monies that would go into the stabilization fund, although I don't actually know where they live when they are granted to us. So maybe they go there. We can find that out or figure that out later. But these would be more uh, project-based funds. Um, and we, we did think of asking about uh, for CPA money annually, um, partly because of the context uh, Michelle was presenting about the types of reparations that um, uh, the sort of historic or open space use um, that CPA, CPA has might represent. Um, but uh, CPA things are like submitted annually and it's like, let's submit a specific project to them. So that's, that's kind of what's going on there. All right, so that said, um, oh, uh, that said, uh, as I said, I, I wrote motions so that I would have the language to hand. Um, so I'm going to read those and Jennifer, also I can send them to you uh, if they get amended here. So let me just get the right thing. So the first mo motion I'm gonna put on the floor is for the AH AHRA to request future annual transfers to the designated reparations stabilization fund of 20% of the town's certified free cash. 
Second. Seconded, and so let's discuss. Questions or concerns about that plan? Dr. Jemison, I have to be really honest with you here, uh, or with everybody here, <laughs> because you and I talked about this together. Um, so I actually thought when, when we came up with the 20%, I thought that that was the number that represented 210 of the free cash this year, which I thought was a million. Um, but I think what you're saying is that the free cash was actually much higher and Okay. So, so let me let me just so that everybody can be on the same page, let me um, show everyone the, the document that I'm referencing. So hold on. I need to um, share screen, but I'm going to go someplace else first. So this is the document center for the financial indicators and budget meeting. And there's this document here, you know, fiscal year 2020. To 12A free cash to stabilization fund, which I already opened here. And it says the sum of free cash is this $2,828,079. And as you can see below, uh, 210 is what's mentioned to be uh, transferred to the reparation stabilization fund. So I did the math quickly uh, with a calculator. <laughs> about... I'm just about to do it. I'm glad you did it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so it's about uh, $210,000 is about 7.5% of this $2.8 million. That is where that number comes from. Got it. Got it. So to perhaps this is, I think, what you may have been going on to say, Michelle, if free cash is somewhere between two and three million every year, 20% of that will be much more than $200,000, um, which I mean, would certainly be a boon for us, but if that is somehow feeling like the wrong size ask, um, I think that's definitely open for discussion. Earth. Earth. Yeah, the 20% the, the uh, figure I think is way more than appropriate. And that figure should stay uh, because that's always a start, a starting point, and it certainly does not represent our bottom line. So, just to reflect back what you just said, Irv, you're saying that um, you are comfortable with twenty percent of the annual free cash certification. Yes, I am. Oh, great. Uh, it looks like the annual 20% of that is $565,000. It's more than double what we're asking for. So I, I think we should ask for the 565, the 20%. Is that what Irv just said too? That's what I just said. I agree. I think 210 is way too low for us to ask for. I think we should ask for more. So to clarify, 210 is what was voted on previously. Right. And so, but going forward, we plan to ask for 20%. All right. So, so this, let me be clear here. Um, we all thought that 210 was voted on. I mean, that's what the uh, that's the assumption that I had, but then I was corrected by the um, chair of the finance committee. Um, and that's neither here nor there. I just want just want to clarify things that really wasn't voted on. Okay. Um, but we have agreed to in principle for this particular amount for this fiscal year of $210,000. That's what's on the table. Correct. Yes. And that's what's getting voted on on the 22nd. So what we're talking about here is what we're asking for for FY23. So um, for and and going right. forward. So the other thing is, since we made this motion and it's been seconds, I want to call the question. But one, uh, Irv, could we, Yvonne had her hand up and I, I would like to hear from Yvonne. Is it, it's okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. And um, can someone help me understand really quickly what call the question? Like, so if somebody calls the question as Irv just did, does that, do, Jennifer, <laughs> what exactly does that, uh, you know, mean? Go back to the vote. You go back yes. to the motion. Go right. back just, to the motion and you let's just come to a vote. Yeah, right. let's just vote it. Right. Like, okay. just do it. 
Yeah. Okay. And, and, and a, a call to question would need more discussion and then um, we would vote and that would override the original vote. Got it. Okay, perfect. Thank right. you. That's very helpful. Also, we are, I don't know if I was here for the original vote. I don't know if that's an issue. Um, there, hasn't, there hasn't been a vote yet. There's just okay. been a motion. Yeah, right. I think you're good. Yeah. All right. Okay, so Irv has called the question uh, or called the vote, right? <laughs> so, I, okay. <laughs> um, we're going to come to a media, have a discussion and come to a media a vote. Right. So, okay. uh, Irv, are we talking about increasing the original 210 that was voted on initially? No. No. So just to be clear, Yvonne, the 210 is for FY22 and yes. that's already sort of in the works. So we're talking about asking for 20% of free cash annually beginning in FY23. Yes. Well, Thank well, you. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think there's, I wanna make sure we're clear here because we're using two FYs here. If mm -hmm. we're talking about FY22, mm -hmm. that's now. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, right now, because we're in FY22. Right. All right. Oh, okay. So we're not. We're in, this is FY22 right now. Right. If you're talking about FY23, that's another, that's next year, which is the budget process that we're going through, which is FY23. Exactly. Right. Jennifer, go ahead. And just for clarification, the fiscal year ends, begins July 1 and ends on June 30th. Thank you. Yes. So the 210 is FY22 as um, written in this uh, financial order here, which is going to go to the finance committee and then be voted on on November 22nd. So our motion um, right now for free cash is for F. Y23 and beyond. Well, okay. wait, wait, wait a minute. If we're voting on the 210, it's FY22. No, we're not we're voting on the 210. What? We're voting on the requests that we want to make from the at the budget forum on Monday for Which FY20. Is 20 annually? Yes. All right. As long as, yeah, I, I just want to make because, anyway, it's. All right, go ahead. All right. So, do we need to, um, Dr. Jemison? Do you want to? Do we need? Would you I'll do read the motion again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what we're voting on is the motion for the AHRA to request future annual transfers to the designated reparations stabilization fund of 20% of the town's certified free cash. All right, roll call vote, uh, just because this is how folks appear on my screen. Uh, Irv Rhodes. Aye. Michelle Miller. Aye. Yvonne Mendez. Aye. Alexis Reed. Aye. Holla Lord. Okay. Lord, aye. Jemison, aye. Unanimous. We got through one team. Yes. <laughs> and I am noticing that Dr. Shabazz is in the attendees. Oh. Um, so I'm going to see what I can do here. Um, Jennifer, oh, actually, it just moved him. It it takes a couple of times all of a sudden. I'm, so he's coming now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is there anything? Can we just ask his vote, Jennifer? Or is there something formal I have to do? Uh, to... Yes. Thank you, I, Dr. Shabazz. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how much he heard. So I'm sorry. Uh, he says he's voting yes. <laughs> so, he's voting yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. Uh, um, that's all of us. So yes, so that's unanimous. Uh, seven eyes, uh, zero nose. Awesome. All right. So you'll find the language for the uh, cannabis question to be <laughs> quite similar. Um, <laughs> motion for cannabis is motion for the AHRA to request future 
annual transfers to the designated reparation stabilization fund of 33% of cannabis tax revenue. This one needs a second. Second. Thank you. And then it looks like we've already got some hands up for discussion. Uh, Yvonne, I saw your hand go up first. Yes, I'm curious if we actually have the right to ask for money to be earmarked for other committees. Like I, I'm thinking we can only ask for money for ourselves. We're only asking for money for ourselves. We're asking so for 33% 33 33% for to community safety and climate reparations. Is that specifically what we would use that money for? No, that was sort of just to say that we are not asking for the full cannabis and these are potential other, you know, you're right, Yvonne. In a, yes. In a, you're right. We don't have the right to ask and the town may tell us to go, you know, that we don't, we don't get the say on how else it's being used. It was just sort of to signal that we aren't, we believe that these other items, community safety and climate are intersectional with reparation work. And so we, that's why we sort of framed it that way, but we're only asking for 33% annually of the cannabis. And that is, and that is the motion. It's not the other people, other people, parts of that are not in the motion. So the 33% is because we're hoping the town will give the rest of the money to the other committees that you're saying dovetails with our mission. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so m my next question is why aren't we asking for 50%? <laughs> like, I don't understand why we're not asking for what we want. I mean, I don't think, I mean, it could be that we get 33% and the town does whatever the hell they want with the other rest of it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I get, maybe I'm playing devil's advocate. I'm just trying to figure out why that number was chosen. If it if it was about oh let's be equitable and try and share, or 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 um, have some kind of um, you know idea of like oh these money should go to those committees. I'm not sure that that is a thing. I'm you know I'm saying we could think that, but the town may not think that, and then the money goes to to somewhere else where we didn't want it to go. It doesn't help us. So, I mean, I'd like to open a conversation about what the percentage should be for us without thinking about what the other committees are. Thank you. Oh, well, well, uh -huh. interesting. Thank you. I have an unreadiness in the form of a question regarding the stabilization fund that we're still not 100% sure about. I don't know if we could eventually have the stabilization fund that we get the interest off and we might have another fund. So I don't know if we can amend the motion to um, make it possible that it might not go to the stabilization, stabilization fund, depending on what we end up learning or figuring out regarding that specific fund. Thank you. The, the issue, well, the issue with that is, um, is that we have a motion on the floor. And I said motion. an unreadiness. I, I know Roger's rules of orders quite well. So when there's a motion, you can have an unreadiness in the form of a question. So my unreadiness. I'm, I'm not, arg I'm not arguing with you, Holla. I'm just making a point. I'm just so saying, please. but I don't know what. Okay, but the chair didn't acknowledge if, you yet. If you can allow me to speak, I would be fine. Uh, other people are speaking without raising their hand. When I raise my hand, I don't even get recognized. So I'm just, let's just talking. Let's just have like a point of order for a second. Um, let's make sure do we use our raise hand function um and um i think if a question comes up like holla just asked give the chairs an opportunity to respond and then we will move to the next hand that's up um so uh dr jemison did you want to respond to holla's question or would you like me to um I can say just from a language standpoint, I am not uh, attached to that, but from a procedure standpoint. Uh, so thank you for bringing that up, Hala. And I personally am not attached specifically to the bit where it says it goes into the stabilization fund. Um, my intention there was to uh, reflect the fact that these are funds that uh, the cannabis money uh, would be money that's going toward 
building sort of in an, an endowment as opposed to going through projects, but I understand that's not actually what it says. So something might be more appropriate. As far as the procedure portion about changing a motion that's already on the floor, I need somebody to instruct me on that. <laughs> okay. The motion, is on, the motion that's on the floor okay, go um, ahead. has to be acted upon or dismissed in one way or the other, uh, but it has to be acted upon. Uh, you can't supersede another motion with by another motion. So without acting up on the form of motion. Can we can we amend the motion? Ah, there you go. You can amend the motion if someone so desires to do that. And is it possible for us to get the language of the motion on the screen um, by any chance, Dr. Jemison? Are you? I know we're sharing this screen at the moment, but would you? be able to maybe get that language up on the screen easily. Yep. And then perhaps we can, um, uh, Hala, if you wanted to make an amendment um, or if somebody would like to make an amendment to the motion. Well, point of order. Go ahead, please, sir. Um, and, and, and the point of order is, is like almost like a point of information. If the money does not go into the, if we do not vote it for to go into the stabilization fund, where are we going to vote to go to? And that question gets to um, to the point of, if it's not going to go into the stabilization fund, then we're going to be putting it into some kind of fund that it would have to be spent during a particular fiscal year. All right. So I mean, so let's let's be clear about where we are here. I think if we really just focus in on what we're trying to do at this time, which is to signal to the town council that we're asking for these monies coming from these places, I'm not even sure that we need to have language that specifies a particular fund. It's perhaps we, the language we need is to say that we're asking um, the, AHR, the AHRA is requesting that 33% of cannabis funds be earmarked for the AHRA, AHRA's use, period. Um, and, and then the whole, because right now, nothing's getting decided. There's a whole six months of budget stuff that's going to happen. There's going to be other opportunities for us to weigh in again. So really right now, what we're trying to do as a committee is ask for what, or, or is to determine what it is we want the town to make possible for the use for, of the HRA's use. Um, so I would be comfortable personally not even having um, it say I think it's fine that we voted on the other one to say the designated reparation stabilization fund because that's the way certified free cash works. But for this, I think we could even just take that out and say for use by the AHRA. Wow. I, I must admit that, you know, um, I don't like people defining who I am. Mm -hmm. And if, if you are saying we're gonna let the council define and say where this money is going to go, because we're not saying, we're letting the council to make that decision. We're not making that decision. And we're saying it clearly, we're not making that decision. We want you to council to make that decision. If that's what this group is saying, then that's fine. But let's be clear that we're, we're giving the council control over this. I think what we're saying is that we're asking in this case for the cannabis that 33% of cannabis tax revenue be earmarked for the municipal reparations plan being developed by the AHRA. I think that's very clear. I don't think that. Um... Yeah, it's, it's clear, you know, Michelle. And my only question is, and it is a question, if we say for our use, that that leaves a huge amount of runway there uh, for yeah. our use for what? I can see here council members saying this right. What, well, what are you going to use it for? Where is it going to go? Are you going to be spending it this fiscal year or next fiscal year? 
uh, what are you wanting this money money for? I mean, you got 13 counselors, you can have 13 different questions. Sure, sure. Okay, I do see that Hala and Alexis both have their hands up. So um, Hala, I think yours was up. Oh, and yours is up too, Yvonne. Yep, okay. <laughs> um, so let's start with Hala and then we'll uh, go to Alexis and Yvonne. Thank you. I just wanted to acknowledge, um, do the procedure. If I would have to make a motion to amend the motion, uh, motion that's on the floor, it would have to be seconded. If it's not, then my motion to my moving to amend the motion that's on the floor fails and then we just vote on the original amend, amend motion. I just wanted a point of clarity for how we do that. That's very helpful, yeah. Okay, Alexis. Um, I was hoping to just get some clarity on um, this, well, earmarking something. Um, when we say that, does that mean that it's like absolutely, you know, guaranteed to be set aside for this thing and will not be touched no matter where it lives? Or is it looser than that? And that's why we need to make sure that it's in, so, you know, a, a safe location or something like that. That's a great question. Uh, my sense, and I'm not, um, I'm not by any means an expert here, but my sense is that at this stage, if we are requesting that 33% be earmarked for the municipal reparations activities, um, that, that that is enough at this point. Um, I think that we would be signaling something to the, ultimately the council and the finance people are gonna figure out how it works. So if they decide to take our recommendation of earmarking the 33%, then they're going to ultimately decide where, if it's gonna go in the stabilization fund or some other way that it can be used. Um, but we're gonna have more opportunities to um, address that as we go forward. And um, so uh, Yvonne and then Dr. Shabazz. Uh, I guess I'm also really concerned about this idea of the stabilization fund as it, you know, we're not actually really sure um, how we're able to access funds. So we're getting funds and putting them into an account. We're not sure how we can access the funds. I think that that is um, problematic. And then also um, I, we keep talking this 33%, but I would like us to have a conversation about how we got to 33%. Like, is that like something that that you feel that the committee feels is um, a standard a standard um, request for these monies? Because I mean, it sounds like a, a sort of random amount. So I'm, I would like some clarity on how that amount um, was determined and whether we can have a discussion about whether that amount is adequate for what we want to do. I agree with Irv that there's lots of questions. People will be like, what are you using the money for? When will you spend it in a fiscal year? Um, I think that those things are, we need to be prepared to um, answer or deflect those questions when people ask them. But um, again, I think we need to revisit, or at least I would like some clarity about how we got to 33%. Uh, percent. So I can say that I made the recommendation um, of 33% and it is completely up to this committee to decide if that's an appropriate recommendation. Um, my thinking was um, we have seen that the community safety and the climate justice and the reparations are really working around the same issues and there's a lot of intersectional points. And we've also seen where sometimes we're sort of, I don't want to use the word competing, but there's a sense where we're, we're all wanting to get some of the money. And so my, this is totally philosophical that I felt like this is a way for us um, to potentially uh, 
sort of acknowledge our support of these other areas and acknowledge that those areas being uplifted will also uplift our area. Um, but again, this is a totally up for discussion. And if, and, and if this committee feels that we should increase it or decrease it, that's what we can talk about right now. Uh, I, I, I would like to, um, because there's a the whole question about uh, the stabilization funds and how it can be used and when and how much can be withdrawn. I have I have the entire budget document with me um, because the Sean printed it out for me. Uh, if uh, you guys can continue discussing and give me five minutes, I will read the definition back to you of the stabilization funds, etc. That would be helpful. Thank you, Irv. Dr. Shabazz. Thank you. I um, would uh, like uh, at some point, I'm glad for more discussion to proceed, but I am inclining toward offering a friendly amendment, uh, both to uh, the language as to say that um, requesting uh, transfers, it, it, we, I'm open to hearing the definition of stabilization fund, but I'm also very happy to say uh, that be directed toward um, uh, the municipal reparations plan being developed by the African Heritage Reparations Assembly that's consistent with our charge that creates um, uh, enough uh, of uh, room for uh, further definition to be given to that to that process in terms of how to earmark it, um, uh, where, where it's to be lodged. Uh, my basic understanding of stabilization funds are that they're essentially just a fancy word or another word for saying a rainy day fund. Uh, it's parking money uh, as, a, uh, as a kind of rainy day fund. But um, whatever the case may be, um, I think it's important to that it's going in, it's being uh, set aside for um, the, the, to provide the funds uh, necessary for the municipal reparations plan that we've been charged with, with developing. So I, I stop now to hear more discussion and, uh, but, but I'm interested in offering a friendly amendment, both as to that language, as well as to increasing from 33 to 50%, but I, I open for more discussion. So, so in the interest of taking sort of one item at a time, <laughs> this has been a wonderful far ranging conversation. I wanna to get to all the points, <clears throat> but the, what we started with was some interest in changing the language. So I feel like now is the time to say, is there going to be a motion to change the language or to amend the language here? Uh, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, I'd be prepared to make a motion. Okay, can you make that motion so we can get through that procedural thing and then we can go and have robust discussions about the percentages and the stabilization fund. Okay, um, to this language, I would say, uh, I move that the language state uh, that we, the uh, African Heritage Reparation Assembly is requesting future uh, and uh, transfers, future, transfers to um, a uh, uh, from cannabis tax revenue in support of the municipal reparations plan being developed by the African Heritage Reparations Assembly. So I'm leaving the percentage out since we may come back to that in another, in another motion. If there's support for that, that's my motion. Lord second. Is there a problem with annual? Um, as I understand it, it's actually collected more than annually. Uh, I think it's the those revenues are uh, reported at least. Uh, I think on a quarterly basis. I may be uh, wrong on that, or may prove me wrong. But my, I think I've seen at one point that they actually report the receipts coming in um, uh, on a on on a more regular basis on a quarter, I think a quarterly basis um, as opposed to an annual basis. So 
why wait, you know, and have those funds parked somewhere else if they're being collected uh, uh, periodically. So I just wanted to not take on annual and just say be moved, be um, transferred, uh, you know, in support of the plan. So I, that's why my I'm deleting annual because I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's actually uh, collected and reported more frequently than on an annual basis. So that, that's good information. Um, the, the thinking behind annual was uh, simply to mark recurring so that we can get this going forward. And there may still have to be a process where we sort of request it every year, but um, in the spirit of something that was mentioned by, I believe, uh, Michelle Miller at a previous meeting uh, with the thought about like, oh, let's ask for this money until the stabilization fund is at $10 million or something like that. So um, that was the idea about annual. And so I, I get asking for it more often if it's dispersed more often, um, but I would I would like to encourage language in here that uh, suggests the recurring nature of the request. For me, I I I, I saw the word future uh, that that future transfers um, was was kind of getting at that, but I do hear the point you're making. It does um, uh, to to try to emphasize. Um, that this recurring, um, and, and it does beg the question then for, for, um, for how many years in perpetuity, but again, we, we may be kind of uh, out, oh, overthinking, overthinking the motion and when, of course, this has to go through their deliberations anyway. Irv, were you ready with that? I do see your hands up, but I... I... Did you still need a few more minutes? Okay. <clears throat> Did somebody, Hala seconded the amendment, is that true? Okay. Yeah. So are you, so then um, Dr. Jimison, are you creating uh, another amendment to, to that? I, mean, I, can, I can, I'll be able to retype it once we voted on the language, but we were discussing uh, recurrent and so if point nobody of, else has any other thoughts. Point of order. Go. Yeah. We never did actually discuss um, Alexis's um, suggestion about using the word earmarked instead of transferred. Um, so I'd like that. I agree with earmarked. Yes. I, right. I agree to the language earmarked. The earmarked, because if it's earmarked, it's, it's um, reserved for us. And then all of the other language about how it gets transferred or how often it gets transferred or is, um, is about policy or procedure and less about our motion. Right. May I try to state the language again and see where we are? Please. Mo um, the AHRA uh, calls upon the town council to earmark um, X percentage of cannabis tax revenue in support of the municipal reparations plan being developed by the AHRA. Any other discussion? It, uh, can we reread the full motion again? So it's clear. The AA, the new language would read, the AHRA calls upon the town council to earmark as what yet undefined percentage <laughs> of cannabis tax revenue uh, in support of the municipal reparations plan being developed by the AHRA. I second that. Well, we, we... Oh, oh we don't not yet. I'm ahead of my, <laughs> can I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, never mind. We need, I think we need to vote on the amendment. So if that if there's no further discussion on the amendment, um, uh, Michelle, since I'm editing, can you run the vote? 
Absolutely, yes. Um, so uh, Dr. Shabazz, how do you vote? Shabazz, yes, in favor. Okay, Yvonne, how do you yeah. vote? Yes. And uh, Dr. Jemison, how do you vote? Jemison, aye. Hala, how do you vote? Lord, aye. Alexis, how do you vote? Reed, aye. Miller, aye. And Irv, are you back? Okay, well, I'm not exactly sure um, in this situation if we just move on because we've we've and we have one missing vote or um, perhaps he can add it later. Okay, I, register yeah. his vote later. It's either that or he should abstain, but not not because he is technically here. Okay. Okay, so it passes uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? Seven yeses? No? We're, we're just passing the amendment, but we still have to decide on the percentage. Correct. Yes, Correct. indeed. That's next. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, did I get the numbers wrong? One, two, three, four, five. It's six yeses because yeah. Irv's not here. Thank you. Or Irv okay. didn't vote. Okay, so six yeses. And I'm not sure what we're calling Irv in this case. It's the majority, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, so now are we able to move back into discussion about the percentage at this point? Okay, great. And Yvonne, do you want to um, kind of get us rolling with that or? <laughs> I didn't have anything in mind. I mean, I would love to have a discussion. I mean, about what uh, seems reasonable. I mean, I'm I, I'm all for restorative justice around the fact that um, many people of color across the country have been prosecuted um, wrongfully at sometimes because of um, cannabis laws. And you know, like um, you know, syste systemic issues with the justice system. So I'm really like, oh, this money belongs to us. But you know, but that's my, you know, that's my opinion. I think there are again, I agree with you, Michelle, that there are other committees that could lay claim to the money. Um, and I'm surprised that other folks have not already laid claim to that monies. So I think we should come up with a percentage that fits what we want and not necessarily what, what we think other people might deserve. And I don't know what that percentage is. I think 33% is an odd percentage. I mean, I would up it a little bit if you, you know, to 40 or 45 or 50%. I think that the number is quite arbitrary. I'm curious about what the tax revenue, how much the tax revenues are, the, the dollar amount, like we did with the other pot of money, what's that 2 million, 3 million, whatever it is. And then we'll have a better sense of planning what our um, allotment would be so that we can do some programming with that money. You know what I mean? Right now it's a big question mark. We don't know what unless Irv is able to tell us what that so tax revenue is. This, this year it was around $200,000. Oh, 200,000. Yeah. It's not that, a particular, it's not a. That was, that was certified. That was a percentage of certified free cash. No, the cannabis money, the cannabis oh, tax cannabis, revenue. Oh, it's different. The, it's the like cannabis money. money was about 200. Right. And that's going to fluctuate on a year to year basis. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm okay with 50%. That's what I think. So, so can I just say, and, and just in terms of the stabilization fund, there is no requirement. And again, I repeat, no requirement that a uh, set percentage uh, is allowed to be withdrawn on any uh, given year. There's no requirement for that. Are there any rules at all, uh, Irv, governing like you can only take the interest or? No, there is no such thing. Okay. Perfect. That was very useful, thank you. That's yeah. big time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so Yvonne, did you say 
Sorry, is that... I said I, I'm not adverse to 30, 33 percent, but I think if it's a hundred, if it's two hundred thousand dollars, fifty percent of that is a hundred thousand um, dollars. I I guess my th I'm I'm the kind of person that's like, so what is this money for? You know, are we throwing it into a pot that we're actually going to use for something? Are we just building? If we're building the pot of money, I mean, the difference is between uh 33,000 and 100,000, right? <laughs> like something like that. Six, yeah. So the six, intention 60,000 and 100,000. So you know, it's really what we think we should be able to have access to to throw into our pot of monies that we can use. Dr. Shabazz? Thank you. I um actually would be prepared to argue for 100%. Um the idea being that um, you want to build the fund to a, a target amount, if we're saying 10 million, if we're saying 20 million to be even more ambitious, um, it's gonna take time to get to that target amount. And you wouldn't be spending anything from, from that amount until it's until you've 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 fully grown it and and then you begin to spend spend what it what it earns. So I would um, actually be prepared to to argue because there are other funding streams that other programs, other legitimate uh, racial equity concerns um, can 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 draw from. Uh, we're not laying claim to all of the free cash. We were very conservative in the amount we are we're recommending to come out of free cash. So um, with the stipulation or the understanding being that we're not necessarily trying to lay claim to this particular uh, area of revenue forever, we're trying to lay claim to it until it, it's, um, it generates, uh, along with these other sources, it generates the, um, the overall endowment we're trying to create. Oh, whoa, whoa. Yes, Irv? So, uh, Amilcar, you uh, just, you know, triggered something to me. And I don't know whether we have agreed or, or voted on this or not. Have we, have we agreed or voted on uh, or talked about or discussed that we wanted the money to go into the stabilization fund uh, and to, so that it created an endowment and that at some point in time, after it was large enough, we then uh, took interest or whatever out of it? Have, have, is that what we have agreed on? We have not agreed on that. And we actually amended the language so that this uh, motion no longer uh, makes the cannabis, like says that the cannabis money is designated for the reparations fund. It's just, we're asking for the town council to earmark a percentage of the cannabis tax money. What we're debating now is the percentage to be earmarked in support of our activities. All right, so we beat this horse to death enough. So <laughs> I, I certainly think so. But um, so I have heard 50% and 100%. Um, I need somebody to step up and make a motion for it so we can decide wait, what it is. Wait, 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 have we disposed of the first oh. the motion on the floor? You missed it. You missed the it, yeah. <laughs> We can record your vote, though, if you like the language. All right, that's all right. That's all right. I, I missed it. I just wanted to make sure where, where I am. Yep, Jennifer. Oh, I, so I can you read Michelle? I, I mean, no, not Michelle. Sorry, uh, Dr. Jemison. You just said that there were two things, and I and I got lost. I'm sorry. And then Irv spoke, and then I forgot my train of thought. Oh dear. I, I have that effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'd be able to tell you which two things, um, but I, I think I was, I meant to, all of us, uh, gosh, you're right. I said two things out of the room. You said that we're having a discussion about the percentage and one was 50% and the other was 100%. Yes. Yep. And we, we should have a conversation about which one. Or somebody and someone needs to a create motion. a motion, <laughs> right? Yes. Jennifer? <laughs> and so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yvonne, did you suggest the 50% and then who suggested the 100%? Dr. Shabazz. Thank you. No problem. We're here for you. Michelle, sorry, go ahead. Alexis has her hand up. Oh, so. gosh. Sorry, Alexis. 
Bring it on. No, no, that's totally. I was, I was just gonna go ahead and and make that good old motion. Do it. Do it. For Do it. one, one hundred percent. All right, motion on the floor for one hundred percent. Is there a second? Second. I second. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, yes. Okay. Oh, uh, Michelle, are you hanging out for this vote? Oh, I will hang out for the vote and then I do, I'm going to get going um, fellow committee members to my daughter's birthday party. Um, but thank you so much for, for all of this work and I'll definitely see you at the next meeting. <laughs> all right, uh, Miller, how do you vote 100%? Yes. Okay, uh, Yvonne. Yvonne, yes, 100%. Dr. Shabazz. 100%, yes. <laughs> This is just the order in which people are coming. Alexis. Uh, Reed, yes. <laughs> Hala. Lord, I. Irv. Aye. Jemison, I. All right. Uh, the AHRA calls upon the town council to earmark. I'm updating this right now. 100% of cannabis tax revenue. Sorry, what percentage those? Cannabis tax revenue in support of the municipal reparations plan being developed by the AHRA that passed unanimously uh, seven eyes, zero no's. All right, so next pot of money to discuss is ARPA. Um, ARPA money is uh, has a timeline on it. So, um, you know, these are more project-based and not necessarily going to not necessarily would be contributed to us to grow them, but for specific for for specific requests. I did actually break this down into three different requests. Um, so we'll go through them one by one. Um, and uh, well, I, oh, actually, I'm going to pause there. Let me start with: Are there any outstanding questions about ARPA funds? Um, and then we can talk, I can talk about these three requests individually if it would help. I think okay. it's very clear. You're, you're talking about three different rounds and or, or two uh, in all rounds and, um, and it's kind of project time on it. And, uh, and yet this gives us something within our planning that we could, 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 could make recommendations toward that would be for specific projects that we could invite um, the community to, to help in, um, imagine. I like it. Exactly. All right. So then we'll we'll do them one at a time. And and Irv, I'll, two of these are yours. So um, we'll invite you to to add a little bit more color to them. But um, I'll just go sort of motion by motion. So the first one, uh, motion for the HRA to request six hundred. That should be thousand. Sorry, six hundred thousand dollars from the round one ARPA funds, which are already so they've been put into categories. So earmarked for racial equity and health. Um, and I was thinking we could just have that to fund any of the things we need to do for the next several years. So our reparation activities, which include, we've talked about needing to do a census, we need to have another body, um, we need to do listening sessions, we need to do community engagement. So um, that was that was the intention of use there, though it is a bit general. So let me start there. Motion for the AHRA to request 600K from round one ARPA funds earmarked for racial equity and health to fund reparation activities and projects through 2026. I second that. Awesome, thank you. Now it is open for discussion. Thoughts, questions? God, hearing none, let's call the question. Who do it, yes, all right. So let's <laughs> vote again. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it coming, all right. <laughs> Dr. Shabazz. Shabazz, yes. Hala. Lord, oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, pres I. <laughs> Also present, all of the things. I love it. Irv. Aye. Yvonne. Aye. Alexis. Reed, aye. Jemison, aye. So uh, we're down to six of us, but that is a unanimous six yeses and zero noes. All right. Um, so I'll put the motion on the table and uh, then we got the whole procedure. So um, uh, this came to us from Irv, um, so I wrote it up as this motion for the AHRA to request also $600,000 from round one of ARPA funds 
earmarked specifically for recreation um, to fund a multicultural center and slash youth empowerment center. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> All right, open for discussion. Um, I know I had just the question that I had about this was if we if we take if we get this money, does that mean that we're the ones who have to make this uh, recreation center happen, or sorry, multicultural center happen? No, not necessarily. Not not at all. And, and yet, I, I think I would I, I would just add one thing to there and, and, and to that is that. I would add um, requesting 600,000 from round one uh, through round three uh, so that uh, we could give the leeway for the town manager if he's going to make a decision on this to spread it out over three rounds. And why I'm the reason I'm saying three rounds is that the first round is now. Uh, there's $12 million total for. First round is six, the second round is six. However, come January or maybe before then, there will be other funds that are, will be uh, earmarked for Amherst via the state. Uh, and uh, we need to be ready for those. Uh, so that's why I guess I would want to say rounds one through two through three. And that then gives the town manager the leeway to allocate those funds over three rounds rather than just one. But it's up to him to do that. But we're still requesting $600,000. So my understanding from our previous procedure is that you need to make a motion to amend the motion. Is that correct? Correct. All right. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm amending the, the motion to read uh, rounds one through three. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Uh, I think that uh, this is the one that deals with the uh, recreation. Yep. So more information needs to be forthcoming. And, and, and just for, so the people understand um, uh, where this is coming from is that there are presently in motion uh, of plans to um, um, lease for either a dollar a year or some other fund amount of money, the current building uh, that is in existence behind the Catholic Church. Those discussions will be forthcoming. Uh, and so the $600,000 would be uh, for, um, that as as well as to any equipment programming etc uh, that would be forthcoming the other thing i want to say in terms of wh why us why ahra in relationship to us to this this is a priority uh, that the uh, that has been set there's no other group right now to speak for this we need to speak for this this is a priority for our town uh, for our youth and for the community. It's not only just a community center, but it's also given the space, it's, it allows for enormous amounts of, of activities to take place in there. So it could be a community space slash youth empowerment center, et cetera. Thank um, you. And, no, go ahead, sorry. And so therefore the, the request for this money is for that to happen. And, and all we're doing at this point in time is saying this is a priority it is something that has been lacking in this town for a long po uh, point of town point of time our youth and our community is involved although it's a community center it will be it will have a bipart focus on both on both levels and and at this point in time if we do not take advantage of the money that is here now and that is to come then I don't know where this money is going to come from to fund this particular item. Thank you, Irv. I want to finish the amendment of the motion, and then we can get to actually voting on the on the updated motion. Um, so there was a second, and then um, it sounds uh, any 
objection or discussion to the to the wording change? Uh, okay, so um, Yvonne, and then I thought there was, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, mine is kind of, mine is quick. Now that we've uh, put, we've added round one to three in the motion, so, okay, is yeah. it, is it 600,000 for the whole round one through three, or is it 600,000 yeah. for each round? Yes, 600,000 total. Total. So yeah. I, 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 w I think we want to add total, 600K total from rounds one through three. So there's okay. uh, so it's more clear because it couldn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yvonne, you can always proofread my material. <laughs> OK. Great. Any other Dr. Shabazz? So thank you. That was um, if that clarifies what the author of the motion intended, that does throw a couple of wrinkles. So not 600 from each round, but we're saying effectively 200 uh, per round if it was evened out to come to a total of 600 across three rounds. That's, that's a, that does change things. I thought it was the actual way was 600 per, per round, but uh, either way, I'm, I'm looking to abstain on, on this modification. Uh, because I have questions about the larger, the larger uh, motion itself. All right. Um, any other not wanting to miss any conversation? Any other conversation about the motion, amended motion language? No. Okay. So we can wait. Nope. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm yep. th I know. I'm thinking. It, so, you know, uh, Dr. Shabazz's comments make me think if, again, like we're um, undercutting our ask. Is that what you're getting at, uh, Dr. Shabazz, is that we should be asking for more? Um, and I don't know what the full pot of money is. And, you know, similar to my question about the 33% from the other ask, um, is are we not asking for enough if we've added that made this be one through three? I guess that is a question for Irv to clarify. Just, just remember, uh, there is a uh, 2026 deadline on spending this money. So, trying to see if I can find it. What Wait, the... The, there's a deadline 2026 for all three rounds. Um, put, yeah, uh, for the for the first and second round, uh, yes, I'm not sure about the third round, but one through two, I'm definitely sure of. I'm not sure about because that money uh, just is, is being released by the state. Okay, so I guess my question is how we haven't actually talked about how we're spending this money anyway, which I brought up earlier. Like we're voting on getting money, but not talking about how we're going to spend that money. And if we don't know what we're spending the money on, like we don't have programs already decided. Yeah. So, I mean, so, so we're, we're voting on money and some of the money we need to spend right away. I mean, I think certainly yes. we can do that. I'm not saying we can't do that. I'm saying that, that often it's like, oh, we want to spend money on this particular thing. Specifically, this one is earmarked for a rec center. How do we know we'll be able to spend that money by 2026? Um, and so the amount is somewhat arbitrary because we're going to have to spend it anyway by 2026, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Every, um, everything is it's, it's definitely arbitrary. But the, the thing is, we know that if we are successful in getting that center, we are going to have certain expenses, and those expenses, one of the expenses, is going to be equipment. Another expense may be some minor renovation and definitely a major expense is going to be around programming. So Yvonne, this particular, the motion that's on the floor reworded or not is about this proposal to spend it on this youth center. So we're asking for $600,000 for this youth center. So this particular ask for money is not general. It's, it's for this particular activity. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece of information is that 
Um, 7% of the $12 million was, is being set aside. Um, or just, I'm taking this from the, uh, let me actually just go ahead and keep doing this wrong share again. So there was an ARPA listening session. Um, the folks responsible for the ARPA funds uh, put together a presentation. This is part of their presentation. There's $700,000 that are been, have been set aside for the youth recreation programming. And the rest of it is up. It's the nice little pie chart that's um, this is round one. Sorry, sorry, I apologize. That's actually the round one money because um, round one allocates these 80% grant of funds. If I'm understanding IRV correctly, the uh, round two will go the other 40%. And in January, there may be more money. But correct. IRV, it sounds like you've got a clarification. So yeah, please go ahead. You're, you're, you're correct. And, 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 and if you look at that, uh, where it says the youth recreation programming, the reason that um, I wanted us to go this route uh, is that uh, there was this proposal in there uh, to put 50, per, 50 uh, uh, to do an RFP. Uh, and I, I, I don't, I have a lot of problems with that. All I want to do is to earmark this money for this recreation center, get, and, and if, if there's $100,000 left for other purposes, for other people to deal with and let them deal with it, but I want this off the table and that we are saying we want this recreation center to happen and we have a plan. So just so folks know where we are in the whole process, we have not yet voted on whether or not we're amending the language on the second app. And I see that there are two hands raised. I just wanna get the language back up here. Um, amending the language for this motion. Um, and then, and then we can figure out the actual motion. And I know that the, the additional discussion came because with the language, there was some concern about what we're actually voting for. So um, Dr. Shabazz. I have a question on that amendment. Yeah, hold on. I thought I saw two hands up. Was there someone else that I hand up? Okay. Oh, Jennifer, yes, please. <laughs> You're on mute. Dr. Shabazz can ask his question first. Okay, go ahead, Dr. Shabazz. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad to have yours because it might clarify. But anyway, here I, I'm going to jump off of the the recurring over three rounds, which is really the the amendment that we're trying to grapple with to the larger to the larger question I have, and and that is, and, and this is highlighted by your showing the graphic that is raising the youth uh, that, that is already being proposed is the need for us to kind of stay really clear and consistent with our charge, which has to do with specifically African heritage culture. And if we would like to then raise, uh, if the motion could, the, the general motion was in, is, it, is intended to reflect not merely additional funds to what some other group is, or, or has already proposed for youth, for general youth, recreation, if we could specifically say this is to enhance uh, initiatives for African heritage youth um, uh, within that general youth frame or multicultural frame, then I would I could see really supporting it. But as as things currently stand, whether round one or through all three rounds, it sounds as though we're being very duplicative of of this of what's already generally out there. And I hear the point that there is no act, active committee within the town that is necessarily recommending this. And here you see an RFP idea being thrown out to, to, to try to find someone to, to be the, the band leader on this. But I am really just speaking to my concern is how do we stay consistent with our charge in relation to this process of the very legitimate idea of, of youth recreation, empowerment, programming, that's true. But how do we stay consistent with our charge to specifically be trying to look out in terms of the reparative aspect as it relates to opportunities uh, uh, and needs of the African heritage community? Jennifer and then Irv. For the most part, that was it. And then I just wanted to clarify with, um, Irv, 
because he mentioned a plan and, and I'm assuming that the plan is just the funding stream, not the location of the center and any and all of that correct. stuff like right. Correct, 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 correct. Just yes. want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Thank you. Jennifer, you're right on point. And Irv, and go ahead. If it's, if it's me, then mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dr. Shabazz, you're absolutely correct on a large number of things. However, if we are talking about justice, if we are talking about um, reparations and reparative and restorative justice for our community, for the African American community, this is something that has been put on the table a number of different times. And I can assure you, if we do not do this with the voice that we have now, that it will not happen because no one else is proposing it. No one else is asking for these funds. There's no one else in a position to do that. We are in a position to do it. Okay. All right, so um, I would like to clear up the motion language change um, so that we can then go on to Again, even further discussion or a vote on this. So, um, uh, so the uh, the suggested changes are to add uh, six hundred thousand k total um, from rounds one through three of these funds. Um, and the, the motion was on the floor; it was seconded. Um, so let's go ahead and vote. Uh, Irv. Aye. Uh, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, I'll go with it. Yes. Uh, Hala. Lord, I. Yvonne. No. Okay. Alexis. Um, abstain. Okay. Uh, and Jemison, uh, I. So hold on. <laughs> I think that's four yeses, one no, and one abstain. So that passes. So let me update this total um, rounds one um, to three. Okay. So motion on the table is now motion for the AHRA to request six hundred thousand uh, dollars total from rounds one through three of ARPA funds earmarked for racial equity. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. <laughs> let me update the right one. <laughs> My bad. Well, it got me confused. Um, all right. Yeah, they're so similar. Yeah, well, <laughs> needs must. All right. Um, sorry, motion for the AHRA, AHRA to request $600,000 total for rounds one, two, three, one through three of ARPA funds earmarked for recreation to fund a multicultural center slash youth empowerment center. Um, so, that's the, that's the new motion that's on the table. We've actually already heard some of the discussion about heard from Dr. Shabazz about you know purpose and mission. We heard from Irv about um, when this can get done. Are there other? Uh, I had asked about whether or not we had to be responsible for it, um, and it sounded like no. But if we request this money, it's it's coming to this body, correct? Correct. Okay. So then, how? Can we give it to someone else? Like, how would we not be in charge of administering it or making this happen? Good question. Okay, um, uh, hold on, uh, Jennifer. <laughs> well, I mean, again, I think it was Dr. Shabazz or Irv or maybe both that said that we're really just trying to get the funding stream going and that some, either the town manager can designate or the incoming yeah. successor group of the CSWG and or a combination of that can take that piece over. It doesn't mean that we have to be responsible. The charge that this AHRA mm -hmm. has is to find funding streams for the different okay. activities or different ways to for reparations. Got it. Okay. All right. I'm just going to start at the top here, folks. Sorry, I can't see when they're coming in. So, uh, Irv? Uh, yeah, I well, well, Jennifer just stated very eloquently um, what um, the, the answer to the question other people are asking. 
Awesome, Dr. Shabazz. Thank you. So uh, on back to, to the larger one, I'm, I'm really um, struggling uh, to whether to uh, uh, want to put our, um, our, our voice uh, on, this, on this particular kind of a, kind of a piece uh, relative to, to the ARPA funds, which again, you know, are, are, are very term limited. They're meant to be high impact on, on, on responding to things right now to help in recovery. But, um, the, but my real concern here, and I welcome discussion, uh, uh, especially from others here to, to maybe move me a bit on this, is whether we, we dilute our voice by you know trying to weigh in on on in, in on on this broader question uh as as uh jennifer was just pointed out you know there are successor groups that have brought this brought this issue up as well they can certainly you know come come into play um uh michelle isn't here now but michelle will be going on to the council in a, in a couple of months and, and certainly can be there to kind of shepherd uh, uh, the, the more general concern uh, relative to, to, to the ARPA funding. But I, you know, given that we're making one request regarding ARPA funds for the racial equity and health uh, uh, activities and projects that, that are planned will you know that that we're looking to to develop in our plan over the coming over the coming months maybe that's the lane we ought to stay in right now and just hope and trust that um, you know that other voices will step up out of you know relative to these to these ARPA funds or step up just out of other funding streams to fight for uh, you know the the youth recreation and, uh, and and other kinds of uh, other kinds of projects out of out of those ARPA funds. Anyway, that's where I'm sitting sitting with this right now is whether we the, by going this as well under the ARPA, uh, and then I see there's even another one after that around around uh, home ownership. Whether uh, having so many uh, uh, weakens actually may may weaken our our voice on these matters or not. I I, I stop to hear to hear from others. Thank you for your comments, Yvonne. Yvonne, you're on mute. Sorry. Um, yes, um, Dr. Shabazz said some of what I was thinking about how uh, direct we want to be with our requests. Um, I, you know, I voted no because I felt like um, adding in. Initially, I felt rounds one, two, three was appropriate. But now, you know, a part of me felt what Dr. Shabazz said, which is we're spreading it out and it could be perceived as like a dilution of what our focus is. And I agree with that. I would love to hear more about, like I see, I'm looking down at the other, the next two motions and some of them are very, are more clear about what, and it fits more within our mission of African heritage and reparations. But I do agree with Irv that um, if not us, who, and some, a part of me feels like, yes, we should move ahead because someone has to be in the charge. And I will also comment and, um, Jen can add to this in any event, even if we're the ones in charge of this multicultural center, there's going to be an RFP and somebody's going to have to be in charge of that, you know? So. I feel like um, that by itself doesn't mean we should take we should take this on, although I'm connected to it because, you know, it's 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 what it's the work that needs to happen. And people have been talking about it a long time and nobody's sort of taken the reins on it. Um, so I'm I'm in the same boat with Shabazz. I feel like maybe more discussion. I'll make it so that I can um, feel capable of voting yes or no. Right now, I don't I don't feel like I, I can vote yes or no on this. Um, I love the next, you know, I wish it were clearer to me. <laughs> Irv? Um, Did you have your hand one, up? One of the, yeah, I do. One, one of the things that um, 
is um, clear to me and it's clear because of prior experiences is that this is a unique moment in time for Amherst and other communities around the state because of the amount of monies that are coming down. ARPA funds, you know, the ARPA, the first round and the second round equal $12 million. That other money that's coming will be here in January. And then beyond that is the infrastructure money. These are unprecedented amounts of money that will be being distributed. If we, and when I say we, African-Americans, do not put our buckets out, we will not get any of that money. There are some people running around with buckets to catch this money, and there are other people running around with umbrellas to deflect money into those buckets. I do not wish to be a person running around with an umbrella. I do not think that we should be in the position that we are in and not say that this is an equitable, a, 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 a social justice project in relationship to recreation for our youth and our community, that we are saying that we want these funds to go there. And we see it as a matter, a matter of reparative justice. If we don't see it as a matter of reparative justice, then please take it off the table. If it is reparative justice, if everyone can see it as a matter of reparative justice, keep it on the table. But if not, please take it off the table. As I said before, I can assure you that if we do not do this, if we do not speak for this, given what I'm seeing out there and going to other, uh, other, uh, other uh, forums, et cetera, this money will be piecemealed out and this won't happen. Jennifer? Yep, and I don't know if this helps anybody because it's not necessarily, but I, I would just say that this is like a bit like any other business and any other time that you're going somewhere to ask for funds. And most often people ask for more and then they, you know, they get someone offer counter offers that. Um, but I do, I will say that this is a unique time where we don't necessarily receive chunks of money in this manner. Um, that has potential to be spread around. But again, I'm just gonna say that think about it like a business would probably the, be the best way to, to do it because that's what the town is at the end of the day, it's a business, so. Yvonne? In answer to Irv's comments, then I would have to say that we're not asking for enough money because it's for, a, you know, it's for a, a building, for a rehabbing, for, you know, I'm saying if it's, if you're talking about $200 each round over, I mean, I guess I need more information about how, you know, round one is when, round one is two. These are not fiscal years. These are yeah. one or two rounds a year, right? No, so this, this is uh, round one, and round two. Our, our money that's available now, but also this money that's going to be appropriated for fiscal 2023. So this is by 2023. Well, now Twi remember, 2023 begins June uh, at the July 1. Right. And that, you know, so put, uh, what, what, let me try to clarify. No. The, ARPA, the ARPA money that's available for round one is available right now. It's already been, uh, you know, the, the town has that money. Irv, did so you have a, oh, July, sorry, wait, July 20, July 1st of 2022 begins the new fiscal year. So the $600,000 that we would get would last until July 1st of, June 30th of 2024. No, well, well actually, actually given the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the criteria around it, the fiscal criteria around it, we would actually have up until 2026 to spend the money. 
again, do you think six hundred thousand dollars is enough to rehab a building and get a get a get some programming in in that kind of way within that time frame? And would we be do we have the ability as a committee to do that? So I'm going to let Irv answer that question. Then I'd like yeah. to hear from Alexis. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Irv. You know, you, Yvonne, you you raised a, you know you raised an interesting point. I mean, if I look at ARPA money rounds one through two and not even think about three, all right? Uh, that if we said we wanted 600,000 from round one and 600,000 from round two, what harm would that do? None. Um, and then I go back to Jennifer. Jennifer raises a good point. Any good businessman knows, and it turns into negotiation. You never put out your bottom line. So maybe, perhaps, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm suggesting we're putting out our bottom line when we should be talking about a starting point, where what you're talking about, Yvonne. Thank you, Irv. Alexis. Um. Uh, okay. I don't think I have anything to say anymore. Okay. <laughs> All right, Dr. Chavez. Yes, thank you. I'm I, 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 where I sit right at this point, hearing what I'm hearing, is that we really need to um, uh, be thinking more within our charge, within our specific scope of activities, and and thinking about uh, how to 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 tap the wisdom of the community more. Uh, things I've heard from the community is forget about you know this uh, uh, this wishful thinking of acquiring you know the the building behind St. Bridget's, which yeah, I've heard that out there, but you know um, there's no idea of of if and when and whether that could even happen uh, in the scope of of the ARPA monies that are out there. You know, whereas there are existing things in our Amherst Re Recreation Facilities. How about the, uh, the understanding and understanding that out of this ARPA money, African heritage people would be able to get the pavilion uh, rent free, be able to get the, uh, you know, be able to have funds for the old school basketball tournament at the Mill River Recreation Area. Uh, ways in which uh, uh, Kendrick, Groff, Sweetser, uh, Cherry Hill, and the pools could be specifically funded in ways to support uh, activities for African heritage communities at those sites. You know, if we can get to our own planning and, and open our, our ears to the interests of the community and the desires of the community, then I think we're really moving toward that justice that 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 Dr. Rhodes has 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 spoken so powerfully about, but right now I know it's it's about you know asking for monies to be earmarked and and uh, uh, so that once we can get into our our more detailed planning about these things, that our voice specifically for repair for for measures that help to repair. Uh, uh, things needed for our community can really come out. But if we don't create the context for the funds to be there, then uh, then we're, 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 you know, it, it won't be there uh, uh, regardless of, of the plan we produce. But uh, so at this point, I'm, I'm, I can go toward it. I don't, you know, the, the language is, is just kind of banal and vague with, you know, youth empowerment and, and, and multicultural. But, uh, you know, I guess if we Go ahead and push for uh, uh, those funds to be to be set aside in this youth area. Then, with our plan coming forward with very specific recommendations relative to African heritage people, then we can uh, uh, um, draw upon the the funds that that will hopefully have have been earmarked. So that's that's kind of where I'm sitting at it. We've we've got work to do. We got so let's go ahead and approve the funding, but then let's get to the work of hearing from our community, elevating our community's voice so that we can really get at the reparative measures for our community. If we're just raising money for some other folks to, to swoop in with their RFPs because they've been doing, you know, uh, uh, some youth activities in town and, and then they get all the money and they go do it in some 
some general way that that doesn't do anything to address the repair that we need, you know, then that's where I think we'll will our our work will really have to be scrutinized. But uh, but for now, if it's just a matter of throwing our 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 name in support of funds in this area, I I can go for it. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, and so I just wanted to say we should be careful about attaching this youth empowerment center to any place. And I, I've heard more than once someone reference a specific the the building behind the church, and we shouldn't. Not that that's not going to happen, but I I think also something that I think that Dr. Shabazz is right. Like, I mean, maybe we should ask the kids how they feel about that. You know, so it's completely different. And so I'm actually wondering if it's possible. And again, this is totally up to you, but it seems like I don't understand why we can't just ask for all the money into one big pot and say these are the different possible, these are the different things that it could obtain to and not neglect any of them at all, right? But I think like, like the the old versus young basketball has needed town support behind it for a very, very long time. People are coming out of pocket and it is something that is well celebrated in the community. And then I also, I mean, I just, I, I just feel like the money can go, like there are parents who can't afford after school. And I know Irv, you're big on that. So all of that, and maybe that's part of something else too, but I just, I don't know if it makes it any easier if it's one bigger pot of money and then we can say like, okay, the community is saying that they want this youth empowerment center. Let's earmark this amount for the youth empowerment center. It is also somebody else's project. And while I understand how we want to make sure there's funding for it, it's still somebody else's proje project. So I'm not, you know, necessarily voicing an opinion, I don't think, but <laughs> I'm just giving a suggestion of how you might be able to move forward and meet the needs of everybody and kind of satisfy everybody at the same time. And then I will be right back right after that. So don't make any major votes or don't change any motions in the in the meantime that I've I'm gone. Please. I was literally going to call to question, but I will wait. Jen. <laughs> <laughs> well Irv has something to say. So Jennifer was correct. And and I was remiss. It, I am, and I want to make sure it's clarified. I am not advocating for any one particular site. I am saying that the money can go for a youth empowerment slash community center, wherever that may be. Yes, there are some sites that are being explored, but that does not mean it will go there. All right. And, and the other thing is that just remember, once money is appropriated for any specific purpose, and if that money cannot be utilized for that specific purpose, other purposes for that money can be determined. I mean, that's Yvonne. bureaucratic, but that's what it is. Yvonne? Yes, I want to um, add to what um, Jen was saying about maybe changing the language to be more general and have it fit better within our mission. I agree with Dr. Shabazz that uh, some of this is about finding out from the community what works for them, you know, what is more beneficial. I do agree that a, a cultural center or a youth empowerment center is something I think folks will embrace, but maybe we can change the language to be more general around what those funds would be used for including like a youth and family centered activities that could include this multicultural or youth empowerment center um and that fits for better into our plans um again we're asking for money and we that we don't necessarily have concrete plans for so i mean i, I brought it up before like we don't even know if this is enough money for us to be able to do things that we want to do and there's a there's a there's a time frame where we need to spend it within a certain amount of time you know so again i'm not sure we have the ability as a committee to implement something within that time frame even if we do get the money air, money's earmarked for us um but um i would say yes um we could go ahead with this motion 
Sorry, so Yvonne, if you want the language to change again, we need you to put a motion onto the floor and give us what the new language is. And we also want to kind of hold on that till Jennifer gets back. I'll sure. have to document it, but she needs she needs to do that. Um, sure. So we can do that, but we'll have to do that. And then we have to do yes. that, vote on it, and then we can vote on the whole thing, okay? Um, Alexis. Um, mostly just because we're waiting for um, Jennifer to get back. I guess I just wanted to say that I agree um, with making it broader, the language broader. Um, and that I think it just in with the experience that I've had with trying to, you know, work within a nonprofit and get a new building and build a new building in this town, it's actually, it's, it's very difficult and it's very expensive. Um, and even like a small building is like one point something million dollars. And we're talking of, you know, we have to consider like, you know, the land stuff and there's historical land and, you know, there's all these like weird things. Um, and so I, I agree that there's like a lot up in the air in terms of like this specific sort of project. Um, so that was a long winded way of me just saying again, that I agree that the, I, I, I would make the motion that, but I, I don't know what to, I don't know what language to use, but so, yeah. It's okay. Everybody has a couple minutes to think about it. Irv. Well, just let me be, uh, go back. There is a, uh, and you, I think Dr. Jemison, you had put up on the screen, uh, the, um, meeting that took place that had all these proposals. Uh, oh, the, this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and if, there, there you go. There, that is a specific proposal. All right. Specific. And what I am saying, and when I, I and maybe I wasn't very, being very clear is that either we can have this defined for us or we can define it for ourselves. Right now, that is on the table. And I want to supplant that by our plan. Okay, cool. All right, Jennifer, welcome back. <laughs> You're on mute. I'm super passionate about this particular issue. So I like, I'm gonna try and keep it short. And I'm also remember, this is when it's hard being a staff liaison versus a member. So um, A, I just want to put a bug in everybody's ear that at some point Amherst College just offered us more than 29 acres of land to build a DPW on it, which is in a place that conveniently could be near a bus stop, which could conveniently also be asked to take to use for multiple different things. Um, and the 600K is going to be able to necessarily build us anything. It would be like a start to something that the, the base for it, right? And at the same time, I think if you kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm back to, I don't know what you guys discussed when I was gone about mending all the, the, the monies together and, and perhaps bulleting out these different things that the money could go to, because I just want folks to remember that during the summer, when your kid turns 13, there's nothing for them to do because they are too old for summer camp and they're too young to go to work and Upward Bound doesn't exist, which is a great place to throw some money for the Amherst kids, right? Because the state won't fund it, but we could fund it. And then, um, which I'm a graduate of, of Upward Bound, so I definitely promote that and wish my kids had the opportunity to attend it. Um, but also the camps, the basketball camp runs from nine to noon. So if you're a working parent, what do you do? How does your kid, I mean, if you don't live on a bus route, how does your get, kid get home from noon to whatever. So there's just all of these different things that lots of money that could be put in a big pot and could be listed out on a bullet for, you know, even to suggest where, how the money could go. There's just yeah, a lot. We, we did discuss a little bit of that. Um, and not, maybe not the biggest, bucket, and it's, but we didn't yeah, make a motion while you were away. So, <laughs> and it steers away from the topic, but of, of the motion, but at the same time, it's everything about it because it's what's supporting the actual motion, right? So. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, okay, Yvonne, did you have a comment? Uh, I, you were saying that I should create or make a motion to change the language to if be, include. And what we're doing, yes. 
I've tried that and I can okay. read it. Okay. Um, so the motion is for the AHRA to request 600 K total from rounds one, two, three, one to three ARPA funds earmarked for recreation to fund. And I, my amendment is to take out that last part and say to fund youth and family centered programming to include planning for a cultural or youth empowerment center. The money that we're asking for, honestly, is only going to be able to fund us planning. It's not going to be able to fund anything else. It might, we might be able to use that money to do some programming, you know, like to hire some artists or hire some, you know, do some kind of programming as Jennifer said, but it's not going to be enough to make, to, to actually create a cultural center itself. Um, I think it'll, it'll, it's the seed money for planning. Um, okay. So that's what I'm getting at with that language. Can you just repeat the motion again, please? Because okay. I got excited and I don't know. Uh, okay. So motion for mm -hmm. the AHRA to request $600,000 total from rounds one, two, three of ARPA funds earmarked for recreation to fund youth and family centered programming to include planning for a cultural or youth empowerment center. I guess I could say programming and to include planning for a cultural uh, or youth empowerment center. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, discussion? Yes. Er, please. Um, Vaughn, I think, I mean, I, your, your motion has a, a, a lot going for it. And I, I guess I would agree with some of it because it, it does uh, generalize some things that uh, I was making specific. Um, and, um, but one of the, uh, I want to make sure the, the, the assumption that I was going on was not for that we were going to go out and build something, right? I was going on some, that's something that a building or buildings already exist where this could take place. Because if I was talking about building something, then I would say $600,000 for each round, all right? So, but your your motion does get at some things and, and Jennifer, you, you you touched on some e emotional points for me, which I uh, have been talking about, is that there are all these places out there where people fall between the cracks and we don't fund for that. Uh, we, we, we fund for, you know, um, you know economically disadvantaged uh, families, but we don't understand that 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 demarcation line cuts out a lot of people. And so we don't fund that or that we don't fund for those things that are part of our community that are outside of the kind of things that we usually fund. The youth leagues, the youth, uh, the, the private programs uh, for football and basketball and all that stuff. We don't, but the thing, and, and this is one of my frustrations, that is not brought to fore is not brought before us so that we can say, hey, we need to fund this amount of money for these particular kind of things because they haven't been funded in the past and they're disproportionately falling on people of color. And if we don't say that, we don't get, we don't, it never happens. So yes, you know, uh, Yvonne, yes, I think what you've just said is, is fine uh, and, and, and that'll work. Uh, and I, I think that uh, as we go forward, uh, if, if we say just these rounds one for one through two, that this will work, and we can put up, find other monies to go into this. But one thing that's left out, and and I don't know where to put this because Jennifer, you hit hit on it, is how do we cover those kinds of programs that you mentioned through something like this? 
we did also vote to request this other $600,000 that's earmarked for racial equity and health to fund reparation activities and projects. That is very general. Yes. For which we might get dinged, but you know the intention there was for it to be activities that this group supported. I, I think they could, you know, depending on how we, uh, it, like the decisions that we come to, I, I feel like they could be used to see, sort of like promote or create awareness or get us to the point where we could fund some of those programs. Um, I, Cause I, I would argue very firmly that things like Upward Bound and uh, positive summer programs have a lot to do with health. Um, you know, not just the physical sense of health, but mental health and sure. and the way people are able to take care of themselves for the rest of their lives. You like, so, um, you know, speaking to what folks have said about like, maybe we should make this all one bucket. Like at this point, we're kind of almost four votes down the road here, but like we did ask for some money that's more general. We're now asking for some money that is focused specifically on youth and family-centered programming. At least that's the way we'd like to frame it. Um, so I, I like to think there's an opportunity in the monies that, that we've asked for so far. Um, and I think this group has proven uh, that we're, we're hungry, right? We're, we're willing to go, we're willing to go get those, those, those dollar bills for what we need. Um, so when more opportunities come, come available, I think we'll be looking for them, so. The point of order, where are we at in the relationship to this vote? <laughs> that is an excellent question, Dr. Rhodes. Um, we need to, uh, if there's any further discussion on the language change here, we need to hear that. If not, then we can vote on the language change. And then if there's further discussion beyond that, we have it. And then we can vote on the actual motion. That is where we are. So we need to vote on this language change. I'm seeing nobody else going, wait, I can't stand it. So let's go ahead, um, uh, call the question and uh, take this vote. Um, so the new motion now reads, motion for the AHRA to request $600,000 total from rounds one through three of ARPA funds earmarked for recreation to fund youth and family-centered programming and to include planning for a cultural or youth empowerment center. Uh, Irv Rhodes, how do you vote? Aye. Yvonne. Aye. Uh, Dr. Shabazz. Yes. Alexis. Reed, aye. Hala. Lord, aye. Jemison, aye. That is a unanimous vote. Seven yeses, zero noes. All right. So <laughs> I'm a little wary. Um, yes, Hala. Is there seven of us or six now that Michelle? Oh, sorry, here? there's six. Thank okay. you so much. <laughs> I fabricated Michelle. <laughs> Six yeses, <laughs> zero noes. Good catch. <laughs> zero noes and one absent. One absent. Um, and right, sorry, I got really excited. I was like, oh, oh, we could move on. But um, actually, now we need to the question. Now, now that we voted that that's the language, is there any further discussion about what this actually uh, is saying? Just for the record, folks, I usually give folks about seven seconds. It's just a thing. That's already passed. <laughs> And I don't see any hands raised. So, all right, let us now actually vote on the motion um, for the 600K from rounds one through three. Dr. Rhodes. Aye. Yvonne. Yvonne, aye. Alexis. Reed, aye. Dr. Shabazz. Yes. Hala. Lord, aye. Awesome. Jemison, uh, aye. Um, again, unanimous, six yeses, <laughs> zero noes, one absent. Okie dokie. Um, I will throw out, as I often do, I would like to get off this call before tomorrow. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, we got two more things to vote on. <laughs> um, and it's 744, which means at this point, we've, we've been on this call for two hours and 15 minutes. So um, just as people think about their evenings, uh, uh, maybe we can try to keep our remarks snappy uh, <laughs> and brief. Would you uh, would you mind, Dr. Jemison, defining snappy? Um, <laughs> perhaps what I mean is not snappy-ish, uh, but uh, certainly as brief as you can make them. And when I can remember, I will time people and try to ask them to wrap up at three minutes. So um, we, we've heard we've heard a lot of passion. I think the passion's important. Um, and I know we all feel it. I think we're going to go to another passionate topic. Um, and 
can we all agree that we're passionate and <laughs> just kind of, yeah, I, it would be nice to, if we can keep them tight, that would be lovely. Um, so this next motion uh, also came from, from Irv. And so I do understand since I was kind of putting it together that there might be some language changes or amendments, but um, this is a motion for the AHRA to request $6 million total across three rounds of ARPA funds earmarked for housing for the development and building of up to 60 units of affordable home ownership condo units on the Strong Street property or similar, which is currently owned by the town. Yeah, and emphasize similar or similar property owned by the town. Yeah. Is there a second on this motion? Uh, second. Thank you, Yvonne. All right, let's discuss. So I would like to speak to the motion. Mm -hmm. Please do. So, you know, evidence is quite available that African-Americans and BIPOC people have suffered decades of housing discrimination in Amherst. Housing discrimination continues in Amherst through policies that encourage building of rental housing for income eligible people which have been quite successful, but fails to provi provide a pathway to home ownership, home ownership to this same population. This failure leads to the continuation and enlargement of a two-tier society in Amherst, those who own and those who rent. We are seeking four to $6 million for condominium co-op or co-housing projects to be located on town-owned land for home ownership. There is not now, nor has there been, a transitional housing plan for low-income people or BIPOC people who are low-income who occupy affordable rental apartments in Amherst for, uh, for income-eligible individuals. This situ situation relegates individuals to, continuous, to a continuous state in which they cannot build equity which is the number one wealth builder in the United States. Amherst owns land on which home ownership units mentioned above can be built. Given ARPA funds now available and to be available, plus the massive infrastructure bill passed by Congress, Amherst can do this on its own without the need to rely on outside funding. Thank you. Thank you, Irv. Yvonne. You're on mute. I get it. So quickly, um, I I feel the need to include. I agree. Thank you, um, Mr. Rhodes. For uh, perfect. Uh, I agree with what you said. I feel like this motion doesn't reflect that this is um, focused on what the mission of this committee is, which is African heritage populations. I'm not sure that we can be discriminatory in that way in this language because this is uh, a for the town and um, Jen can correct me on that but is there a way for us to not make it at that specific I I feel like we're make we're limiting this just to however many units of affordable home ownership condo units on a particular property I think I'd like to strike the specific language and have it be general, which is affordable home ownership development for African heritage populations. And I can clean that language up, but I'm wondering if that is what we can do with this uh, motion. But, 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 uh, perhaps you misheard me. I did not specifically say for African heritage, I said low income BIPOC. Uh, I, I did. I did hear you. That's why I'm but, saying, is why, it, should it and, be African heritage populations and not BIPOC is what I'm saying. Well, we, we uh, let me go back. Um, the reason for that language uh, is that that will, as current legal language uh, stands, that would pass muster. Okay. And, all right. And, and secondly, I did not, and I was clear that it's not for a specific property is for Strong Street or other properties, similar properties in town. So it's, it's just not specific to Strong Street. And I, I can't, I wanna make sure I emphasize it. This is not specific 
to Strong Street is for other properties that the town owns in town. Why is it up to 60 units? Well, it, it's, it's because there are, the, the in, everywhere we would go, there's certain property, it might be up to 60 units, it might be up to 100, depending upon the property. But at least I'm specifying some number, some minimum number. Alexis? Oh man, I did have my hand up, didn't I? Okay, so I I, I want to thank you for bringing that up, um, Dr. Mendez. I, I, I that's your title, right? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I because I I had the exact same, and and I guess I'm also wondering the legal, you know, how we get around that sort of thing because I'm also very wary of creating a you know homes under this fund that don't end up getting occupied by the people that, that this fund is being created for. Um, and I'm wondering if that is something that we have to specify or can even specify here, or if that's something that goes deeper into the, you know, the people that are involved with developing that. Um, I, I don't know, but I, I have the exact same um, concerns. Thank you. <clears throat> Hala? And not to um, be on three peat, but I, I similarly would want not, yeah, I'm uncomfortable with including BIPOC because we know anti-Blackness is in there and then how many actually Black families or African heritage families would end up. So I, I don't see it here. So as long as it's maybe not in the motion, but, and I know there's legal ramifications, you can't just, but I'm just uncomfortable with including all BIPOC on this committee with what we're doing. Thanks. All right, uh, Irv. It's, 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 it's very difficult. We know we, we can, to the question of making it Af for Af just only for African-Americans and that we were going to, to do this just only for African-Americans, uh, then we would have a very, very, very steep legal hill to climb. All right, I mean, we got, uh, that's very clear. However, if we say low income, that this would be for low income, or you know, as we define low income, which I would want to redefine it in some ways, uh, then you could say for low income with a focus on African Americans. You can say that. Uh, however, just remember there are uh, approximately around 2,400 African-Americans in Amherst. Some of those 2,400 are, are, are students. And um, we African-Americans are a minority of a minority. And we must be aware of that. As, um, as um, people have said, and various communities who are taking uh, reparations forward, we cannot do it without allies. We need allies. And we do not need to put our allies on the sideline. Jennifer? Um, Irv, I just wanna say thank you for bringing up housing. It is so important because we are pushing families out of all races because of the, the, the amount of rent the amount that rent costs at this moment. So, but I, similar to what you said, I don't know if we could put in a percentage clause or as opposed to a focus clause or something like that in there, if that will work, right? So we're not being so exclusive, but also maybe open it up to like home ownership programming or something similar to that. So a couple of things like 60 units and we say 40% of 40 of them have African Americans in them. That's a fantastic thing. And it's their own little community. But that just seems like, like I'm a big fan on mixed housing, right? Like areas where people from all different economic backgrounds are spread with all over the place. And I don't know if anybody knows of East Hampton has one tree house, which is a program that is really geared for foster families and seniors, but we could moderate that because on the outskirts the people who live on the outskirts are kind of paid or substitute the 
uh, subsidy, right? They they hold that subsidy piece and, and this is home ownership. So it would work a little different. You'd have to kind of figure that plan out. But I just think, you know, spread across. Like, I think the bigger problem is if we could just get the land homeowners to sell their homes, homes a little bit more affordable so that people can actually afford to get them. That's a whole other story. And I know, but like, you know, I'm, yeah. I don't know so, if any of that made sense, but I just, I think it's great. I'm glad that you included it and something does need to be done. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in here and make some comments and then Alexis and then Irv. So one thing I want to remind folks of about like what we're doing tonight is not like voting on the exact language of the exact thing that's going to happen, right? We're, we're really trying to liberate Michelle and I to go to the budget forum on Monday and ask for this money under the umbrella of a purpose. So I would suggest that perhaps we do not have to be super concerned about this language because what happens is we're going to ask, the town is going to consider, we may get some or all of what we asked for, and then you know, we will need to use it for that purpose, but that purpose may have changed a whole lot by the time we get that money, right? So there will be time then to figure out if it's 20 units or 60 units, uh, what we can say about the percentage of African heritage people who, who live there. Um, so I just, I just, I don't, I wanna ask if people maybe not get too keyed up about what this particular thing says, because this is not, the exact thing that we're gonna get, even if we ask for it very specifically. Um, so just keep that in mind as we continue to have this discussion. And then Alexis and then Irv. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna keep this really fast um, because I, I appreciate you saying that and I, I and keeping us on track. So I, re I really appreciate you saying that. Though I guess I just wanna say that I'm, I'm always keeping in mind the fact, you know, like, like if it if it is a legal uphill battle you know then it is what it is because at the end of the day it it, it was the law that you know we were you know illegal and i you know were you know not even considered human and and human rights are completely you know you can't look at them objectively because at the end of the day everything's politicized and all of that and so at the end of the day i'm just trying to think of like housing in terms of equity and in terms of reparative justice and you know thinking about you know a, you know, low income can include so many different types of people. Um, and at the end of the day, if we're trying to keep all of this within our mission and within our, you know, if, if we're trying to keep everything pointed to um, our African heritage mission, then um, I feel like it's worth being that specific um, as, as far as we can um, legally. And if, if there has to be some sort of battle, then it is what it is because at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I don't expect any of this to be without um, resistance. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Irv? You know, um, the uh, reason for this is that, uh, as, as I specified, but the other larger reason, overarching reason, reason for me, there are people and groups in this town who specialize in low-income housing and they specialize in it for rental units. They don't really want to hear about home ownership. And I've spoken to them and tried to get them to turn them, um, themselves around to look at home ownership. And it hasn't happened. So I will, will say this again. Right now, Amherst is specializing in low income rental housing, which keeps people poor. It keeps people poor. And there's a whole dedicated industry in this town for doing that. From our, from our housing, you know, from the housing agencies uh, that are out there, the people, uh, the uh, private, nonprofit group, the town groups, they're all specializing in rental housing affordable rental housing. They're not specializing in how we get African-Americans, BIPOC people to be homeowners. There are incredible numbers of people who have been renting for years, for years. 
And that same income stream that they're paying for rent can go to home ownership. And I know this because I've done it. I have actually done this. this. I'm not talking about something I haven't done. I know that it's possible, but we haven't made the commitment into this town to do it. I am wanting the town to make that a commitment and I'm wanting us to lead the way by putting this on the table before the town council. Thank you, Yvonne. I, ha I have rewritten the motion. So can I introduce the new language? Because I think that that might move us into the, move us forward, if that's all right with you. Do I make a motion to amend the language? I make yeah. a motion to amend the language. Um, the new Second. motion, I can read slowly. So you hear, okay, so the motion for the AHRA to request six, $6 million total across three rounds of ARPA funds earmarked for housing for reparative home ownership assistance for African heritage populations to contribute to amassing wealth. Should I repeat that? I second. So, that, so the, wait, no, I'm not done yet. Not done yet. Only halfway done. So home ownership assistance for African heritage populations to contribute to amassing wealth, uh, semicolon, as well as the development and building of affordable housing units on town land. Put, put home ownership units in there. As well as the development and building of affordable home ownership units. Right home ownership units on town land. I second it. That's good. All right, we have a second. And um, so uh, Irv, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Yvonne? Aye. Dr. Shabazz? Shabazz, yes. Alexis? Read yes. <laughs> Holla. Lord, I. Uh, Jemison, I. So that's six yes, zero no, one absent. Great. We have a new motion team. <laughs> and um, is there discussion on the new, newly worded motion? Uh, just, just a point of information here. Obviously, four to six million dollars doesn't build 60 units. All right. Uh, on, it, but it was the, what, what this does is that if you're on town owned land, it would take care of most of all the costs up to and including design. And also would include infrastructure, bringing water, sewer, electricity to the site. It would include permitting, etc. Everything except for the actual building of the building. The building of the buildings would be caught, would be, would be paid for by the mortgages of those people who would be occupying those buildings. Thank you. And the reason that I said the town can do this without relying upon state funding or anything else is that the town can bond that amount of money in, in terms of just the building costs and then have that bond paid down by the mortgages. Again, the town can control the entire project from A through Z. And people will say, well, where's the subsidy? Well, the subsidies are already there. There's no land cost. We're, put, we're putting four to $6 million in there. There will be other funds that will be available that are gonna be coming up. There will be down payment assistance money that can, that can occur. Anyway, all of this is totally in the control of the town. And I wanna emphasize that this is not out of the control of the town is totally in the town's control. Thank you. Uh, other comments before? I, I, yeah. I wanna add that this, it, for me personally, is an important point that I hope we will come back to when we go through what uh, the other tasks are of the committee. 
the things that we want to achieve. I think this is a big one. And so I'm glad that it's included in, in here because I feel like we need to revisit this and fill in the, a few of the gaps. But this is a good beginning. And um, do we need to do a motion to vote on it? I uh, just call the uh, call the question. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. So we're now voting on the reworded motion for the AHRA to request six million dollars total across three rounds of ARPA funds earmarked for housing for reparative home ownership assistance for African heritage populations to contribute to amassing wealth, as well as the development and building of affordable home ownership units on town land. Uh, Hala, how do you vote? Hala, how do you vote? Lord of Stain. All right, uh, Er. Uh, aye. Yvonne? Aye. Dr. Shabazz? Vote oh, aye, I think on the last couple of words you had originally had town own town owned land but but yes Shabazz yes did I get that wrong Ivan yeah just a, it just you don't have own on it owned land but was that the actual language I, I thought I is it town owned Jennifer okay please restore that I didn't see that yeah no problem okay um Alexis Reed, I. Jemison, I. All right, so that's five yes, one abstain, one absent. Oakley dokley. So um, this last motion, uh, just to give a little bit of background, uh, the Community Preservation Act um, there's there's money for that every year. Um, in fact, a lot of it has already been earmarked, but they always save some because their um, their process is early and they're usually projects that come later. Um, and I hope I'm explaining this correctly, Michelle. And I she was explaining that um, you know we really have sort of been encouraged um, to to go for something um, that and there there are many things in terms of. Uh, what did she say so nicely, um, where the CPA really calls out this kind of like satisfaction area of reparations, um, which has a lot to do with, you know, things that are they're culturally engaging and they have to do with actually displaying our history and, and reminding everyone how long we've actually been present here, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, that is where we were inspired uh, to ask for some of the $500,000 that they usually set aside. Um, and yes, we chose 175,000 and not the whole thing, uh, just because as a start. <laughs> um, uh, so that, that's, that's where we landed. It is arbitrary. They're always a little bit arbitrary, but you know we don't have a specific project. So it just seems like let's get enough for something. Um, so this motion is for the AHRA to request $175,000 from the Community uh, Preservation Act funds for fiscal year 2023 to fund an open space or historical preservation project as one element of African heritage reparations in Amherst. The open space or historical preservation project language is from CPA's sort of like charter, like what they're supposed to do. Um, and I know Dr. Shabazz has mentioned a, a marker idea that he may have gone to. Dr. Shabazz, did you go to the CPA about the with the marker project already? I haven't gone as yet. The, the thing that I have recently researched and found is because I wasn't sure if it would actually qualify reading the language, but I found out that they did fund a marker program. It's a marker program for uh, the heritage or the history of different writers who lived, authors who lived in Amherst and uh, about 14, 15 different authors. So I was, I'm energized by, by the fact that CPA funds uh, funded a marker program for writers. And, uh, and so yes, uh, there is an effort afoot now to, uh, to bring a very specific uh, idea. So with the AHRA endorsing this, relative to an African heritage um, reparations or, or historical um, uh, preservation 
uh, community preservation, I, I think this will really uh, set the stage for for the support of uh, of this and other types of programs. Terrific. Thank you for that background. So I, I, I wanted uh, Dr. Shabazz to discuss that as an example of the kind of thing that this might might cover. Um, and now we have some confirmation that it would indeed cover that. Um, so. This is a this is a group with with many thoughts, um, though perhaps not in hour three <laughs> of the meeting. But um, is there discussion about this motion? Or actually, sorry, there's got to be a second first. Is there a second? <laughs> I second it. Thank you. All right, discussion. I'm trying to actually find an example uh to show everyone here yes if i can share screen absolutely I I can do uh it. yep hold on let me stop sharing here we go Think. so um here is um the inn at oh that's jones library at the inn at on boltwood if you go around to the side uh, and of course it is a historic hotel of America uh, with the National Trust designation. But if you go around to the side, uh, you can see this marker. I discovered this marker one day. This is metal with a color image. Here it is, it's number nine on the Amherst Writers Walk. The Amherst Writers Walk. And it is identified as the Shirley Graham Du Bois home because Shirley Graham Du Bois lived when she was a faculty member in my department, the W.B. Du Bois Department of Afro-American Studies. And as you can see in the upper right-hand corner, it says a project of the Amherst Historical Commission funded by Community Preservation Act funds. And you can see the various other homes that are all listed there of different writers, Shirley Graham Du Bois being the only one of African descent that is, uh, that is acknowledged here. But, uh, but once I saw that, it confirmed because I wasn't sure in the language that you can read online that this would actually uh, uh, be appropriate. But when I saw the Amherst Writers Walk was funded by Community Preservation Act funds, it has emboldened me to uh, to go forward. So I think with the support of this measure, um, it can go toward our um, getting that. The key thing is that still remains to be done is as we get into the whole community input phase of our work, it's how to involve the African heritage community in identifying those sites of memory that should be um, that should be marked. Uh, and, and then from there, we can go on to, to look at, you know, uh, the markers themselves, how to make them and so on. But, uh, but yes, I, I, I do support um, this measure. And um, I think that's a healthy amount to form, to support a marker program as well as others. That's, uh, that, that wouldn't be just exclusive. I don't think a marker program would necessarily eat up the entirety of that budget, um, but, uh, but would even make room for some other possible uh, projects. All right, thank you. That was awesome to have an example. Um, any other comments or thoughts? All right, we will call to question. So uh, on the motion for the AHRA to request $175,000 from the Community Preservation Act Fund for fiscal year 2023 to fund an open space or historical preservation project as one element of African her heritage reparations in Amherst. How do you vote, uh, Dr. Shabazz? Shabazz, yeah. <laughs> Irv. Irv, aye. Alexis. Reed, aye. Hala. Lord, aye. Uh, Yvonne. Aye. Jemison, I. All right. Yay. So here we are at six yeses, zero noes, one absent. And um, that is actually the end of the programming for the evening. <laughs> um, I will pop our agenda back 
up here. Give me two ticks. Um, yes, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, thanking you for all of this. I, I, I glanced at some of the language around ARPA funding and um, you know some of the things we have, I'm not sure uh, how they'll square with, with that. Hopefully, um, you know, we'll see how it works out. But um, one thing I do note is in terms of infrastructure, broadband in particular, and I'm sure Alexis could educate us about you know, that as well and whether and how that could be while generic and everybody could benefit from, uh, from broadband infrastructure development in Amherst, uh, certainly the access to Wi-Fi um, for, for African heritage people would definitely be a considerable, uh, a considerable bonus within that. But, uh, uh, but just again, looking at some of the, uh, the things, and I, I also noticed in glancing how communities, and this was a headline of just a few days ago, um, people are really you know, having community input sessions. Do we know that efforts are being made to solicit community input in the form of any kind of community input sessions about what people would like, uh, where they might feel these, these funds that are designed to help uh, rescue us from the negative impacts of COVID-19? Uh, if, if there are any sort of robust uh, community input sessions? There were yes. at least two public listening sessions, maybe three. Uh, please go ahead, Irv. Yeah, and, 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 and the, um, in that document that you had um, put up, um, Dr. Jameson, there was, it, it also outlined all of the points and people that they contact and just the engagement process that they use. Uh, so uh, under stakeholders consulted. So yeah, there, you know, uh, that was there. But, you know, again, one of the things that uh, is important for all of us to know and to understand is that this process is uh, although robust. There are other processes that are going on as we speak and will be going on tomorrow and leading all the way up until leading till decisions are made that are un unseen. And, uh, and so we need to be aware of that and to make our voices heard on all levels, everywhere. But I can guarantee you, if we do not, if we do not mobilize ourselves around this, we will not get what we're asking for. If we mobilize ourselves about around what we're asking for, we will get what we're asking for. I would just like to say, I wish that, you know, also essential workers, if there's been thought given to that, I think people like Jennifer Moyston and others that have worked uh, uh, tirelessly through the pandemic ought to uh, get get a little something out of this ARPA if just just dinner out somewhere when <laughs> that's a little plug for, for, for some support for our essential workers. Absolutely, and I sort of moved on from it, but I thought the, the broadband idea was, is, is very interesting. So I hope we'll revisit that um, in further discussions. Um, so uh, is there, I know we have several members of BAM, would you like to make an update or add anything to today's proceedings? Not at this time for me. I don't know if others have, uh, have heard. Yeah, not at this time. All right, um, and we routinely have a second public comment period, um, which uh, I will announce. Um, there are currently <laughs> no attendees here besides us. <laughs> we are already making our comments publicly, so I think we can go away from that. Um, our next meeting is currently scheduled for um, the 18th of November. Uh, what, 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 you, you skip member reports. Oh, sorry. Are there member reports? Yes. The uh, Black Census. Okay. Uh, the, um, I had cons uh, been consulting with the Donahue Institute. They gave a first cut, which I have sent out. Uh, and now they're going to be putting in, uh, I asked them to put in a specific proposal which will give us where the 23 to 2900 uh, 
people who identify as African Americans, what sections of town they live in. That'll give us that information. And it will also screen out students from that. Once we have all that information from them, we can then put boots on the ground in terms of people going out to interview and to find these, uh, these 23 to 2,900 uh, African Americans to complete the census. So the, the, the first cut has been done, the second cut is coming up. The third, the third, the third cut will be boots on the ground. That's awesome. Thank you, Irv. Um, I'm sure we will cover that in more detail uh, in upcoming meetings. Um, all right. So our uh, next upcoming meeting is uh, currently slated for November 18th. Um, there is also uh, a session that night on the Community Development Block Grant, um, which is said to have a, a, a room for a, a reparations or a, sorry, I should get the language about this right. Hold on a second. Um, must consult. Apologies. This was actually going to be a Michelle item, so <laughs> I'm playing a quick, a quick catch up. Um, um, there's supposed to be, it, it was, you know, presented as having a slightly different lens than usual and there being uh, more, more room to think about equity in that space. Um, and I guess we sort of wanted to think about, you know, when we talked about community development block grants before, um, it sort of came down that they're, they're limited to um, folks uh, who are uh, low and middle income. And uh, they usually fall into these very specific buckets of, of work that they, that they have to do. And, and they would, if we were going to ask for them, it would have to be very project-based. Um, as opposed to money that we could sort of salt away. So um, the question is, uh, you know, so Michelle and I could divide and conquer, like somebody could go to that meeting and somebody else could go here, but I was just wondering if uh, anyone on, on the assembly, you know, particularly if you're more familiar with community development block grants, feel like this might be something that's really worth our hearing or, um, or you know, maybe not. Just I'm saying that because this is a, Federally, this is a federally uh, dispensed program. Yes, Jennifer, maybe you have the information we need. <laughs> I mean, I most definitely don't. But um, okay. <laughs> so, um, I just, I just wanted to know: a, what time is their meeting? Do you know? And then, is their meeting being recorded because it's CDBG, oh, yeah. Yeah. so that we could perhaps watch it afterwards? I could ask the staff liaison to forward it to me. The, the link. That's awesome. And then uh, you guys could see it that way. Um, Thursdays are a big meeting night, so it's hard for everybody to get to all the different meetings on a Thursday. Exactly. Um, the time on that appears to be uh, 7 to 9 p.m. Yeah, that's smack in the middle of ours, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, we're meeting at 6.30, correct? Yep. So yeah, I mean, we could either divide and conquer, or as you said, if we can find out if it's being uh, recorded. So um, just wanted to see if folks had strong feelings. Yes, Yvonne. I have a conflict that night, so I might not be able to make the meeting anyway. Okay. Just so you know. Good to know, thank you. I think you'd mentioned that before, that that was a possibility, so. Yeah, okay. and that has you down to six. So if like somebody else is out and then one of our members goes to the meeting, we're gonna be pushing the quorum issue. Also, very, very good point. Okay, so we'll take that into consideration. So let's actually put a priority on, not necessarily on you, Jennifer, but we'll, we'll think about, we'll ask um, if it's being recorded um, so that we can, at least we can hear it uh, later. So. Is it the, it's the town though, right? Is it a town meeting or is um, it something different? CDBG advisory committee, the public hearing is what it says. So I don't know who's actually, but yeah, it's on us. the town calendar. So. That's us. Okay, I think. got it. <laughs> So, so it's likely to be recorded. Is that the thought? Okay, cool. Then we'll go ahead and that. Awesome, thank you. 
All right. Um, I don't have any other topics. So I think we can adjourn here. We just need a time. 825. Thank you for Thank hanging you. in there, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great conversations, actually. Very true. Very I think important. it put us on the right path for our next um, meetings, I think. So just Excellent. great. Looking Thank forward you. to it. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you very much. Good Thank night, you. everyone. Bye. Good night. Good night.